and invaluable as a protocol. More, yeah. more like, you know, FTP or, um, you know, TCP or, uh-huh. uh, you know, some, one, you know IRC, internet, yeah, protocols. internet protocols that are, you know, very well used. HTTP. Yeah, hey, the you know that chain, one. The blockchain. You know, hypertext sort of transfer the, protocols, everything you use to, when you, whenever you go to a website. The blockchain is the uh, the guts behind Bitcoin. That's what they're talking about, right? right. When they say the protocol. Uh, and that is an incredible, uh, it's an incredible invention. And right. it can do a lot more than just money. Bitcoin, a.k.a. Cloud Ledger. <laughs> yeah, that's another way to talk about it, sure. I mean, uh, essentially, that's if you renamed that, you know, nobody would want to use it because of the awful name. But it would yeah. be a very accurate name. Yeah, it's true, because Bitcoin <laughs> is essentially, it's not only a cloud ledger, but a public cloud ledger, right? right? So, Because anybody can go and look at any Bitcoin account and right. look and see where the Bitcoins have been sent to and where they come from and... And all of that, if you w- if you want to take the time to do that. Well, and you'd also have to know what those codes mean. You know, they'd have to have meaning. You know, you can yeah. see it, but it's like, well, do you happen to know that five H two one three nine eight seven six A forty three two one eight is you know Ian or whatever? Yeah, you know, well, like, yeah, you have to have a little information <laughs> going into it. To you make have it to have a lot of information useful. because you, you know. <laughs> so yeah, we were talking about Free Ross. Go to freeross.org. They accept Bitcoin there as well as PayPal, and you can cut them a check. If you want to help out, because they're going to need the help. They are up against all of the might of the federal government, and they're trying to bring it down and bring it down hard against him. So we'll keep you in the loop as we learn more. I had heard that Derek J., our Monday night co-host, is going to be going down to New York City uh, for this, for the Ross Ulbricht trial. So hopefully we'll have somebody on the ground there. I think Michelle Seven's going to be there as well. So at the very least, we'll have somebody who uh, will be able to call us up and kind of keep us in the loop cool. with uh, with what's been going on. At least that's what I hope to see happen. Um, and, you know, what better time to go to New York City? The police aren't ticketing people, which is what we were talking <laughs> well, about. I don't know. This, uh, this article here from Reuters uh, by way of Newsweek says that there was heightened security in Times Square on New Year's Eve. So mm. it's the same thing as usual in this photograph here, you know, certainly looks to be uh, you know, like typical cops setting up barricades and doing well, the everything. Well, to- the cops haven't quit their jobs. Well, yeah, They're sure. just not, in, they're allegedly not enforcing tickets and things like that like right. they used to. Yeah. So this says thousands of New York City police officers prepared for protests in Times Square against excessive police force as an enormous crowd of revelers gathered there under unusually tight security for the nation's biggest New Year's Eve celebrations. It's been and- pretty tight over the last couple of years. I wonder what made it unusually tight for yeah. this year. Uh, they say in the hours before the giant crystal ball drop at midnight, bomb sniffing dogs and counterterrorism units joined uniformed police officers posted on the street around the famed Manhattan crossroads. Other officers were stationed on rooftops and at area subway stations. Security is always tight in Times Square on New Year's Eve, right. especially since the September 11, 2001 attacks, the World Trade Center. But this year, extra precautions were being taken after months of protests over mm. the deaths of two unarmed black men at the hands of white police officers in New York and in Ferguson. Well, well, plus the cops are paranoid. It's not so yeah. much about the protests. It's about the shooting. Yeah. The cops are paranoid as hell. Yeah. Tensions in New York sharpened nearly two weeks ago when a gunman shot two police officers sitting in a patrol car in a Brooklyn in Brooklyn in an apparent act of retribution against law enforcement. In light of what happened two weeks ago, there is concern for every member of the New York City Police Department, said James O'Neill, an NYPD officer. Officer safety. Yeah. Paramount. <laughs> This is something that's re- in real recent memory. It's something that every cop in New York City is concerned about. Cops get, re- I mean, cops are paranoid anyway yeah. about people being out to get them. And, you know, as I, what I will cite for my example on that is the recent James Cleveland trial. Right. Uh, which, by the way, the video is up at freekeen.com. It's three hours and 40 minutes long. So if yeah. you'd like to watch the whole thing or excerpts or whatever, it's there. In the James Cleveland trial, they uh, testified that they thought he had a gun. That when he was, that he was, they thought he was sneaking up on them in this, right. you know, place where they were. That was, it was outside of a su- they suicide testified attempt. That. I doubt they actually believe that. I believe they're probably just lying. That's what they do. I think they're that paranoid. I think that uh, yeah, I, I think the police are that paranoid. And, and now it's good that they didn't draw down on him and shoot him to death. So right. you know they didn't actually they, they held back and they waited till they could verify whether or not it was a gun. So you know I guess that puts them a cut above the average cop. But uh, here's I why I don't them. believe it because I watched the the video of the you know what happened in the Cleveland case and the guy just decided to make things up on the spot. They didn't know anything about him until the guy said, "Well, the barricade's been moved, so you need to move." I mean, it was just, you know, well, again, no, it was just is, bullying. It well, was just another cop being a high school jackass bully okay. who just who decided, I "Uh, I want you to leave." No, uh, no, thank you, sir. I'm not. I'm not leaving. 
Now you have to leave. And the I'm barricade's been expanded. I'm going to keep making stuff up until I have something and I'm going to arrest you. That's what was going That's on. That's what was going they on. They didn't really think he had a gun. It was just a jackass cop making stuff up well, on the spot. I okay. Well, had I, nothing to do with him having a gun. It was no. him not respecting authority. You're correct. You're absolutely right about that's what they were doing, and that was the reason why they did it. They didn't do it because they thought he had a gun. What I was telling you is that when he was approaching, that was what they said. More coming up. Yeah. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, Craft with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt 800-981-7590 if you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster call right now 800-981-7590 800-981-7590 get out of debt now 800-981-7590 You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm.
It's Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here to this New Year's Day edition of the program. We're here live, as always, with you tonight. You've got Ian. And Johnson. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. And the features you'll find there, they're completely free. Plus, something else free for you, free pound of coffee. You go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. Folks who are coffee drinkers that are on this program have become big fans of BuzzBox coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. You just go to coffee.freetalklive.com, put your order in there. You get your first pounds free. You just pay the shipping cost to cover that, and uh, they'll send it to you. You can cancel your subscription at any time. And the subscription is you get on the auto ship program where you can you know, customize how often you want the coffee shipped, what kind of coffee you want shipped, and how much of it you want shipped at the time they ship it. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Plus, some of the profits from these pounds of coffee will go toward providing micro loans for people in tough parts of the world uh, to to, uh, to live in. And you go to, uh, to coffee.freetalklive.com. And for every 10 listeners that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com, we can fund out one new microloan every single month. So coffee.freetalklive.com. It's great coffee, and you can help change lives all at the same time. Go get your first pound free. Just cover the shipping cost over at coffee.freetalklive.com. As we continue here, the story is from Rolling Stone, uh, where Matt Tybee, perhaps, T-A-I-B-B-I, I'm taking a shot there. Hopefully I get it right. He's writing an article about the New York Police Department dramatically cutting back on the amount of ticketing and arrests that they've been doing over the last couple of weeks since the police shootings have occurred. They're saying it's because of the mayor, Bill de Blasio, that uh, that he's not supportive of the police enough. So they are trying to squeeze him where it hurts, which is in the wallet. They're not going out and ticketing in the way that they would normally do. And that means that... Well, people are going to be a little bit more free in New York City. Now, as uh, Tybee points out in this article, it's not necessarily a, you know, this isn't a principled libertarian protest uh, or work stoppage or whatever. But it is interesting because ultimately it's it's going to help the little guy, meaning that, you know, if you're not getting ticketed for a bunch of crap like open container violations— and you'll have more money in your pocket. Yeah, apparently. watch them. We'll show New York. The New York will fall to pieces without us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, actually, we're all fine here. We're, we're great. Thanks. So uh, back to the story <laughs> here. They were. He just mentioned that apparently some of the officers he's talked to who complained to him uh, in the past about these policies where they're given quotas and they have to write as many summonses as the quotas demand every single month. It would be amazing, says Tybee, if this New York protest or police protest somehow brought parties on all sides to a place where we could all agree that policing should just go back to a policy of officers arresting people when they have to. Meaning that there's someone who's threatening another person, there's a violent person, there's an actual criminal. Because it's wrong, he says, to put law enforcement in the position of having to make up for budget shortfalls with parking tickets. And it's even more wrong to ask its officers to soak already cash-strapped residents of hotspot neighborhoods with mountains of summonses as part of some stats-based crime reduction strategy. Both policies make people pissed off at police for the most basic and understandable of reasons. If you're running into one, there's a pretty good chance you're going to end up opening your wallet. And isn't that just so true about police when you run into a cop either you're going to end up opening your wallet or you're going to end up in a prison cell or a jail cell for some sort of period of time and it shouldn't be that way it should be that when you run into a cop you smile you say hello he you know acknowledges your presence and says something friendly back to you rather than looking all over to see if you violated some sort of bs ordinance which is the way it is now. They're right. constantly investigating everybody they come across to see if they can arrest you or ticket you for something in most places. New York City, that's not happening right now due to this uh, this protest on their part. He says that... I was just going to say, well, every interaction with a police officer between a civilian and a police officer now is, you know, just like we were talking about in the break, is, you know, both sides are paranoid that they're going to get shot. Yeah, and for good reason. Both, uh, let's see, he says both policies make people upset at the police. He says your average summons for a QOL, quality of life offense, costs more than an ordinary working person makes in a day, driving a bus, waiting tables, or sweeping floors. So every time you nail somebody, you're literally ruining their whole day. Not only that, I mean, he's just talking about tickets. Right. If you arrest a, a person, which is also fairly common in a place like, or was fairly common in a place like New York City, 
if you arrest a person, not only have you ruined their day in that there will likely be fines involved at uh, some later point, but you've also prevented them from getting to work, in some cases resulting in them getting fired. Uh, if they are held in a jail cell for some charge about, you know, victimless crime, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't have enough money to pay bail, frequently these folks arrested for victimless crimes are not very wealthy. So they don't exactly, they're just not sitting on a few grand that they can right. just cough up to, uh, to pay bail with. So, you know, if they have to sit in that jail cell and they had a job they were going to kiss the job goodbye. And while you're at it, if they're in that cell long enough, kiss the apartment goodbye too, because you're not going to make uh, rent payments if you, A, don't have a job, and B, right. are sitting in a jail cell. So, and, you know, is your family going to pick up the loose ends there? Or do you have a, do, does your family have enough money to pay your, th I don't know, what's rent cost in New York City? It's not cheap, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, thousands of dollars yeah, a month in rent? thousands of dollars a month. So this ruins people's lives, and uh, you know the big question is how long will this police protest go on for in New York City? He goes on, he says, if I were a police officer, I hate to be taking money from people all day long, too. Christ, that's worse than being a dentist. So under normal circumstances, this slowdown wouldn't just make sense. It would be heroic. Unfortunately, this protest is not about police refusing to shake people down for money on principle. For one thing, it's simply another public union using its essential services leverage to hold the executive, and by extension the taxpayer, hostage in negotiation. This, In this case, the public union doesn't want higher pay or better benefits, in which case it wouldn't have the support from the political right that it has now. It merely wants support from the mayor. On another level, however, this is just the latest salvo in an ongoing and increasingly vicious culture war mess that is showing no signs of abating. Most everyone across the country knows the background by now. The police in New York are justifiably furious about the December 20th ambush slash murder assassination of their two officers at the hands of a, ramp of a uh, rampage killer from Baltimore. Esmail Brinsley. Now, Brinsley, who shot his girlfriend and promised on Instagram to put wings on pigs before coming to New York and doing the evil deed, had cited the killing of Eric Garner in his rant, saying, among other things, quote, they took one of ours, let's take two of theirs, unquote. According to the transitive theory of culpability so popular in our left-right media echo chamber, Brinsley's monstrous act put de Blasio in the political jackpot, since both had expressed dismay about the death of Eric Garner. Uh, who, of course, as you know, has uh, died over a s struggle with the police over a 75 cent cigarette. De Blasio. Which is not true. If you watch the original video, it the, the cigarette thing, it had nothing to do with cigarettes. If you watch that. Isn't full, that why they were arresting him? No. He broke up a fight. Okay. He broke up a fight, and then they were so asking they were about cigarettes. They were the asking fight? about cigarettes. They're like, cigarette. You know, he says his words, and I, I, this isn't an exact quote. He's like, the hell are you talking about cigarettes i don't have any cigarettes on me mm -hmm. like cigarettes what are you talking about he's like i just broke up a fight i don't have any cigarettes on me leave mm. me alone <laughs> like and then they well just, he was a known lucy dealer though right? i guess that's why they were didn't harassing have any, him is it, i mean he didn't have any on him it didn't appear mm. he was wearing a t-shirt and like some shorts it didn't look like he had anything any way to like i don't know be carrying cigarettes on him De Blasio, of course, never urged anyone to put wings on pigs, and his comment about the actual grand jury decision that it was something, quote, many in our city did not want, unquote, was really just a simple statement of fact. But he also clumsily personalized the incident, talking about his own half-black son, Dante, saying that he and his wife, Sherlane, had to talk to Dante about the dangers that he may face, that it should be self-evident, but our history requires us to say that black lives matter, unquote. As maximally uncontroversial as that sounds, the local tabloids went nuts over his remarks, bashing the boss of the nation's biggest police force for quoting a globally surging protest hashtag and talking about how he has to teach his own son to be wary of police. Then, the two officers were murdered in a horrible tragedy that will have lasting implications for people on all sides of the political spectrum. Thing is, there are really two things going on here. One is an ongoing bitter argument about race and blame that won't be resolved in this country anytime soon, if ever. Dig a millimeter under the surface of the Garner case, Ferguson, the Lou Ramos murders, and you'll find vicious, race-soaked debates about who's to blame for urban poverty, black crime, police violence, immigration, overloaded prisons, and a dozen other nightmare issues. We'll continue. We'll take your thoughts coming up on Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. 
Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free, bring up whatever you'd like, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 with you tonight. It's Ian. And Johnson. Sharing a story from Rolling Stone where Matt Tybee is pointing out the work stoppage, as it's being called, of the New York Police Department where they are refusing to make many of the arrests or ticket writings that they would normally do. Uh, Apparently arrests of this typical, like, non-violent type that are so common are down 94 percent while overall arrests are down 66 percent 
as a result of that. Tybee has a few more comments here, and then we're going to get into your calls and thoughts. He points out that there are two things going on here. One of them is the ongoing argument about race and blame, and the other is a highly specific debate over a very resolvable controversy. Not about police as people, but about how police are deployed. Most people, and police most of all, agree the best use of police officers is police work. They shouldn't be collecting backdoor taxes because politicians are too cowardly to raise them, and they shouldn't be preemptively busting people in poor neighborhoods because voters don't have the patience to figure out some other way to deal with our dying cities. The police protest, ironically, could have shined a light on all of that. Instead, it's just more fodder for our ongoing hate-a-thon. Happy New Year, America. So he's right in that, uh, I mean, I may not have the same political viewpoint as uh, as this author, but he's certainly right that the protests, you know, could have been meaningful, but of course the police don't care about that. They, don't, they, you know, he says he's talked to police who understand that these arrests, these nonviolent victimless crime arrests are BS, but yet they continue to do them. I mean, in all cities besides New York, where now right. they've, they've cut back on them. And it's not because they think it's wrong is why they've stopped doing them. It's because they want the mayor to respect them or right. whatever. And they're respect showing respect us, respect our right. authority. This is a flexing of their power. Right. This is them flexing their might as police officers, saying, "Oh, well, you don't like us. Well, we're just not going to collect your taxes for you here, your backdoor taxes." And uh, that's what it is. Let's go to Chris Canwell. He's on the line with us here via <laughs> Skype. Hello, Chris. Good to be with you, gentlemen. Hey Thanks for having me on. Yes, I was listening to uh, you. You read the Rolling Stone article. And I, uh, I, I do realize that there's some political implications here. There is a fight going on between the department and de Blasio. But I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that police are thinking twice about doing these things because they realize that there is a possibility of them getting shot in the process. And in my article at ChristopherCantwell.com, there was a quote in the New York Post that they actually were saying, I'm not doing this because I don't want to get shot in the head. That's a cop who said that? Yeah, in at uh, my my article, uh, dead cops means less oppression. Uh, the there was a New York City police officer who who told the New York Post. He said, um, I don't have the quote in front of me, unfortunately, but he said something to the effect of, I'm not going to run around writing summonses and and making petty arrests uh, and risk somebody shooting me or hitting mm-hmm. me in the head with an axe. Yeah, but at the same time, Chris, uh, there's another story that uh, the Washington Times posted two days ago showing the federal government has shipped nearly 4,000 more assault rifles to local law enforcement right. agencies in the three months following the Ferguson riots, marking a huge surge in the amount of lethal firearms being doled out to police and sheriff's departments. They uh, drew attention and criticism to the massive, the, the riots, that is, drew attention and criticism to the massive firepower state, and local police are now able to bring to, uh, that they're now able to bring to bear on the citizens and earn scrutiny for the Pentagon project known as the 1033 program that helps arm many of those agencies agencies by making surplus military equipment available to them. Apparently, the amount of the equipment that has been shipped out since Ferguson has dramatically increased. One example is 3,879 rifles that the Pentagon shipped in that time frame was an astronomical increase over the dozen rifles that were shipped during the same three-month period in 2013. So isn't that possibly evidence that, you know, violence and unrest in the streets is resulting in more militarization of the police. It's, it's certainly resulting in more militarization of the police, but all we needed for that to happen was time anyway. That's going to occur no matter what. What I what I hear when I hear about police um, arming up and getting more weapons and, and armored personnel carriers, it's because they're afraid, right? Mm-hmm. The, the reason that they're buying all these weapons is because they're absolutely terrified that people are going to strike back and do something uh, to, to stop them from imposing their will upon people. And they're not wrong, evidently, are they? Well, is it going to stop them from opposing their will on people if two cops get shot? Well, not necessarily. Well, it seems to have done that in New York City. I mean, you know, a drug arrest dropped by 84 percent. I call week. that good news any day of the week. And even if there, even if you do attribute it to the political disagreement between the department and de Blasio, you're still dealing with a situation where that was created, right? That that conflict was created by this uh, by this shooting. Sure, but this is one week, and this is one week while cops pout and uh, you know thump their chests against de Blasio. It's not because they're doing it out of any sort of principle. 
I didn't think they were doing it out of principle. I'm saying that they're doing it out of fear. And of course, you know, the, the situation now, yeah, it's going on for a week now. And at some point, they'll probably get back to business as usual. But also the case that I've made through over the course of time has basically been you're going to you're going to reach a situation in this country or in just some geographic area of any type that, you know, a certain number of the people in a given geographic area are going to say, I'd rather shoot back than deal with this. And when that gets to sort of a critical mass, I think that's what you saw with uh, I think that's what you saw with uh, the, the shooting in Bedford-Stuyvesant. And I think that you're going to see more of that as time goes on. The state is every day creating people who are filled with hopelessness and rage, and they will lash out violently against their oppressors. And when that reaches a critical mass and you start seeing cops getting shot, you know, once or twice a month, these people are going to think twice about going out there and doing these jobs. Well, I think that, you know, you make a strong argument, Chris Cantwell. I just can't support violence on a principled basis. And I think that in the long run, you're going to be proven wrong. I think that ultimately in the long run, what you're going to see is the police are going to arm up even more and they're going to be more likely to hire badge heavy cops who are relishing the opportunity to smash some heads and to get into a fight with somebody and to get into a shootout with somebody. I think that's what you're going to see long term. You may be correct that short term, the fear from the shootings has sort of put a kibosh on a lot of this police enforcement but i think that uh, that long term we're going to see something a little bit different and i think the the fact that they're getting even more weapons in a shorter period of time now is an indicator of uh, of the police state to come but i hope you know i hope that uh, that things don't get worse but i i don't you know I don't know if that's realistic. Yeah, I mean, let's just hope that there's some kind of mass philosophical awakening really soon then, because, I mean, I think that uh, people lashing out against uh, the people who victimize them is inevitable, whether any of us like it or not. I mean, you I know, think you're uh, right Is about Ismael that. Ismail Brinsley wasn't exactly a libertarian. He was some kind of black power Marxist, but mm -hmm. he seems to have done more to reduce state oppression in New York City <laughs> in one weekend than uh, the entire history of the Libertarian Party. So... <laughs> Well, there are ways to stop the police's aggression without using violence, and there was actually a story uh, that Alternet posted today of a Florida crowd that formed a human shield to protect a man ah, from being arrested for smoking marijuana. And that's the kind of thing I'd like to see people do is to step in and, you know, nonviolently put a stop to police arrests and harassment of people. Uh, step up, grab a video camera, record things. I mean, it doesn't have to, to go to violence. I think you're correct, though, Chris. And, and what I think you're correct about uh, in this case is that, yes, if people are harassed and arrested and threatened and intimidated and killed and uh, and have b bones broken and have their lives destroyed by the police as the those tragedies continue it does become more and more likely that someone is going to lash out using violence i don't think that means that violence is okay or the solution or is going to be a long-term solve for this but i think that you're, it is predictable what you're saying is is true there any other thoughts you want to share tonight well, let's hope for the best, gentlemen. Thank you for having me on. Happy New Year. Thanks, Chris. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. What do you think, John? My concern is that if there's a, you know, if these cops are, if police start being afraid of getting shot, right, and not doing the job, then all you're going to be left with is the police who aren't afraid of being shot. So you're right. just going to get these crazies, you know, like it's even worse. It, cops. If you think the police is militaristic now, wait until the police are become the type of people who are not afraid to die. Yes. Because they're they're the same type of people who are willing to go and and shoot at people in foreign countries. It's that's what it is means to be a military. I mean, and that if that if that's what happens over here, then you're really militarizing the police. Let's talk to Mike. He's in Oklahoma. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mike. Hi. I hope that the the fact that the shooting has stifled the uh, amount of tickets and petty arrests show the people that uh, life can go on as usual without the police interacting with us over these uh, victimless crimes. And mm. they, I, I didn't hear anything about the people forming a human shield, but I'm a truck driver and I have many hours to think during the day. And I've often pondered the idea if, if 25 men surrounded a cop that was abusing a person or hurting somebody and said, this is enough, this isn't going to happen anymore here right now. That's, you're exactly right. That is the kind of revolution that needs to happen. 
We'll talk about that more here in a moment. Mike, I know you're calling about something else, so if you want, hang on. We'll bring it back after the news to continue the discussion. And I'll tell you more about what happened with this human interaction where okay. they, they stepped in to try to stop a cop from making a, a pot arrest. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You can take control here. This is Free Talk Live. More coming up. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, December 31st, 2014, New Year's Eve. Gold is trading around $1,202, silver around $16.21, and Bitcoin is trading around $312.61. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week, even three days without any help? Keeping an emergency food storage supply is the most effective way to begin to ensure your family's well-being during an emergency. eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future might hold. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bean or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, despite the FBI saying otherwise, the New York Post, CNN, and other news outlets are reporting that it's unlikely that North Korea played a role in the hack of Sony last month. They cite a three-hour briefing held in St. Louis this week by U.S. cybersecurity firm Norse, which provided the FBI with information linking several individuals, including a former Sony employee, to the hack. Despite the new evidence, the FBI is holding firm to the North Korean connection. The Sony hack reached its pinnacle when the company pulled the satirical film, The Interview, from theatrical release, based on threats made by the hackers due to the film's comedic portrayal of an assassination attempt on North Korea's leader. Late Tuesday, thousands of Russian protesters gathered in the streets to condemn the conviction of a popular Kremlin critic. Alexei Novani and his brother Oleg were convicted of stealing over $500,000 from two firms and sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Navalny's sentence was suspended, but his brother's was not. Beginning on January 1st, 
21 states will see an increase in minimum wages. Alaska, Arkansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota recently approved increases during the November election. Critics of the pay raises say it will force businesses to cut down on hours and hiring. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at TheConsciousResistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, December 31st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A new genetically modified version of tall fescue turf grass has been cleared for cultivation by the USDA without a study of the long-term effects on the environment. The USDA released a statement saying the process used to create the product does not involve the use of a plant pass for gene transfer, so they have no authority to regulate the crop. The Capitol Press reported that an anonymous breeder warned about cross-pollination between the turf grass and other common grasses. A resolution calling for the creation of a Palestinian state and an end to Israeli occupation has failed after no votes by the United States and Australia. Five nations, including the UK, Lithuania, Nigeria, Korea, and Rwanda, abstained from voting. U.S. Ambassador Samantha Power called the resolution a staged confrontation, and U.K. Ambassador to the U.N., Mark Weil Grant, said he was disappointed that the normal and necessary negotiation did not take place on this occasion. Russia criticized the United States for attempting to monopolize the decision-making process. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more details, just go to thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Wednesday, December 31st, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting, reminding you to spread liberty with a smile. A Rasmussen poll reveals that nearly all American voters share a deep fear of botching another election, with most voters admitting that selecting candidates for public office is something they're historically just not particularly good at. I really hope I don't completely f*** things up as usual, but you never know, things do happen. According to the poll, three quarters of voters said election day panic would cause them to base their vote entirely on hearsay, while 93% acknowledged that they only recognize names of local candidates from signs along state highways. In Cedar Rapids, Iowa, stunned friends and acquaintances expressed shock and disbelief when a body found in the woods turned out not to be Justin. Local residents found the naked corpse draped over a tree stump Saturday, and as news spread, many found themselves struggling to comprehend how it wasn't Justin lying dead in the forest. I heard the news, and I still can't come around to it. I just can't imagine that it's not Justin there lying dead in the woods. Are they absolutely sure it's not him? Friends and family are still urging authorities to double-check the body, or at the very least, bring in Justin as a suspect. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, and you can bring up what you would like. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Welcome to the first episode of 2015. In studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Johnson. And the police and the abuse of the police uh, continues Hopefully to be. Hopefully we don't have any police in the studio tonight. <laughs> Not that I know of. Uh, and the, uh, the abuse of the police continues to be an issue that is confronting Americans. Right now, uh, folks in New York City have it pretty easy with arrests down significantly over the last week or so since the uh, police dust up the controversy there between the mayor and the police department. Some are alleging that it's because of the shootings that happened and suggesting that uh, that that proves that violence is a solution to the problem of the police. I disagree. I think that I if anything, it is a short term gain that will be uh, eclipsed over time by worse cops, by more badge heavy cops coming into the force, cops who are less likely to be to, co cops who are not as afraid of being killed, cops who are more interested in being violent. Uh, that's what we're going to see. And we've seen that happening already, by the way. That was uh, there was a police trainer who 
who's called this show in the past, and we've met him in person. Uh, Mark and myself have met him in person, who said that the reason he quit the business of training the cops is because he couldn't stand the quality of the recruits anymore. Right. That there were too many badge heavies, uh, as they were called, people who want to use the the badges their you know their excuse to wield power and and hurt people. I think it was two or three years ago. I saw this on an app recently called Time Hop. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of funny because it goes back in your Facebook posts and allows you to see uh, posts, what you posted, what you posted, you know, a couple of years ago or a year ago or whatever. And a, a day or two ago, I saw a post that I posted either one or two or three years ago where it was basically a Supreme Court ruling that said that okayed the barring of high IQs for cops. Oh, yeah. 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 There's some departments that do that. They don't all do that, but. Some that's department. insane. Like, how can the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court to say, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, you, you can. You they can. want cops who aren't going to question their orders. They want cops who are going to do what they're told. Right. Uh, we're going back to Mike. He's in Oklahoma. Mike, you're back on Free Talk Live with Ian and Johnson. I apologize. I was a little nervous before. Just to, to uh, clarify the point I was trying to make was I think the people are okay with the idea of the police acting as men tasked with the uh, job of keeping the peace not mm-hmm. corporate code enforcers eating out the sustenance of the people one violation at a time. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the people, I think people by and large, especially people in the younger generations, understand that the police are not their friends. I think that that's not an uncommon viewpoint. Um, and certainly I think that as you look at younger demographics, you probably would, would see that being the case. Now, that's just speculation based on people that you know I've had experience with, but I think that that's true. And it's just that the politicians don't understand and they don't care. Yes, I agree. The reason I wanted to call was bring up the fact that I'm absolutely disgusted by our selections that are shaping up for the next president, either another Clinton or another Bush. And the people at large, the general population, they're okay with that. Does nobody (laughs) else sit around and say, why are we why are we only given the opportunity to choose from two different selections every time? I don't know how okay with it. Well, wait a minute. How how okay with it are they? I mean, have there been studies that have been done where Americans are, yeah, bring on Bush and Clinton 2016? Or is it that, you know, only a, a certain amount of the American population is for this? I mean, because only so many Americans are registered to vote. Of those who are registered to vote, only half of them come out generally, you know, maybe 60-something percent will come out on a presidential election. So, you know, not even a majority of people are even voting for president, let alone for the winner of the the contest. So, I don't know. How many Americans really are excited about that? I don't know. Do you know anyone? Is there anybody that you know personally who's like, you know, Mike, I'm so excited for Jeb Bush and uh, Hillary Clinton. Boy, this is going to be a real matchup. Or like taking one side or the other. Go Clinton! Or, you know, go Jeb. I mean, do you know those people? I know those people exist, but do you know any of them? My dad. Which one's I've he for? My dad about it many. He's he says, oh, if Hillary runs, we'll be voting for her too. I always give him a hard time about <laughs> Obama, and uh, he's a self-proclaimed socialist. And he says, if there was a socialist party, I would belong to it. And uh, I, wow. This is the thing that's funny is my dad used to when I was a teenager. I can remember my dad in his 30s standing in the kitchen, shaking his head, saying, "I don't know what we're going to do about this new world order." And now he's he's made some kind of shift and he's been uh, assimilated (laughs) do you know the scene in uh the tale it's either the tale of two cities or charles dickens uh the other popular book that he wrote where uh kip goes up to the headmaster at the orphanage and he holds up his bowl he says i'd like some more please that's what the people Hmm. remind me of in america they just want some more of the corporate's will Boy, I hope that it's. I hope you're wrong about what you're saying. I mean, I don't really know, right? Because I mostly travel in the liberty circles. Um, but you know, from my understanding, it seems like we've read stuff about millennials not really falling for it. You know, like that they, they, uh, they're not being as uh, as snookered by this whole two party system as previous generations. At least that's what I think we've we've shared on the air previously. It would be interesting to see some of the numbers, you know, how how likely are people under the age of uh, 35 or 45, uh, for instance, Gen Xers and millennials to really continue buying into the BS from the Republicans and Democrats. I I'm curious to know that. Yeah, I'm interested to see what's going to happen. I think that this next election, 
we may get a third party as a token, uh, you know, just to show that, uh, oh, well, it's not the way most people think that it's just either one or the other. And they might give us just a, a, I don't know how to describe it, just like something as fodder as a third party. When you say they, you mean like the powers that be or something? The mainstream media that orchestrates these debates that we see on the television. Well, uh, that's a pretty optimistic uh, viewpoint because they've been doing everything they can to keep third parties out of the debates and keep third parties away from the discussion for ever since uh, Ross Perot back in 1992. I mean, it's been 20 plus years since we had a a real third party challenge for the the office of president. I guess we'll find out. Mike, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. And and for Mike's edification, the uh, the story name that you were looking for is Oliver Twist. Oh, the Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens. Dickens. Please, sir, may I have more some more? Porridge. <laughs> uh, toll free number tonight, 855 450 free. What is your experience? I mean, if you are a millennial or a Gen Xer and you're, you're kind of out there and conversing with people about the issues or whatever, I mean, how many people are really talking about how excited they are for Hillary Clinton or Jeb Bush? I'm just I don't know. I don't I don't have those circles, you know. I don't know what those people would be saying out there. If you want to share your experience with us, please enlighten us. 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733 because it's not fair to do a poll of of um the likely voters, right? Like a lot of these polls that you'll see, the scientific surveys, they're polls of likely voters. So if you're asking somebody the question, if somebody calls you up, you answer the phone, Johnson, and they say, are you going to be voting in the 2016 elections? Right. And you say, no, that's the end of the call. Right. You're not a likely voter, so therefore they're not going to ask you how you feel about Jeb Bush or Hillary Clinton or whatever. Right. So I imagine a lot of those people who aren't interested in uh, you know, the 2016 elections aren't getting their opinions registered in these polls. Doug's with us in Columbia. Doug, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, good to talk to you guys. Doug, are we in the on the okay. radio in Columbia tonight? Absolutely. Oh, wow, that is great news. I did not know we were on during the week. I wonder if it's like a special presentation. Anyway, go mm. ahead with your thoughts. No. No, this is not the first time I've listened to you guys here in Columbia, and well, I'm very appreciative to uh, Kevin Cohen at the uh, station here for bringing you guys on. Well, normally we're on on weekends awesome. there uh, on Columbia at the, uh, the talk stations, but uh, that's news mm-hmm. to me. I'm very excited to hear that. How long yeah, have we been on weeknights? Too. I've listened to you two or three times now, okay. and uh, I, I catch you coming off from uh, work sometimes in the evening, so it's good Sounds to turn like... on and hear you guys on. So. Wow. Sounds like somebody's got to make a call to Kevin I Cohen. Am, yeah, I'll be calling the program director <laughs> tomorrow to say thank you for that. All right, so Doug, what did you want to share with us here on this New Year's Day edition? Well, I've got a couple of things for you. Sure. Um, the Great Depression... Uh, Senator Prescott Bush, who was George W. Bush's grandfather, used the Great Depression for an attempted military coup to take over the United States and put it under military rule. And so there's been a a plan to transform this country for decades. Hold that thought, Doug. I want to hear more about it, but I want to give you time to to talk. So stand by. We're going to bring you back more here in Moments with Doug. Your calls and thoughts. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. To our founders, regular elections were crucial since they would help ensure that government was responsive and responsible to the people. Yet our founders knew that democracy alone wasn't enough to protect liberty. At times, a majority can be as dangerous as a king or dictator. And so our Constitution limits the power of the majority. As Supreme Court Justice Robert Jackson wrote in 1943, One's right to life, liberty, and property, and other fundamental rights may not be submitted to vote. They depend on the outcome of no elections. This principle is even more important today, with many of our laws not written by elected officials, but instead drafted or deeply influenced by outsiders who cannot be removed from office by voters. And so the Constitution limits government power because elections, while necessary for democracy, are not sufficient to protect freedom. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. 
According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mints, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your AMP will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Once again, freetalklive.com. Those other talk show hosts, they charge you for their websites, and ours is free. Something else that's free is ProXPN. You just go and download their software for free over at proxpn.com slash FTL. And that will encrypt your data connection, meaning your internet service provider will not know what you're doing online after you start running the ProXPN software because it'll encrypt your connection. So ProXPN.com slash FTL. They uh, will protect you from snooping by your ISP and also maybe the coffee shop manager, you know, whoever it is that runs their IT side of things. You know, maybe they want to see what you're doing with their internet connection. Whatever connection you're connected to, it'll be, uh, you'll be protected from the prying and spying of the uh, people who are running that connection with ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. When you're ready to upgrade from their free account to premium to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to, you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You'll want to use code FTL50 in that case. That's FTL like Free Talk Live. And the number 50 to save you 50% off the price of their annual account, which brings the price down to about 5 bucks a month, which is a great deal. It's uh, also valid for the lifetime of the account. So once that first year's done, you'll still get the discount on the next next year proxpn.com slash ftl the promo code is ftl50 there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee it's a great discount on privacy that is priceless proxpn.com slash ftl we go back to doug he's in columbia listening to wqxl uh doug go ahead with your thoughts i wanted to make sure you had a chance to get him out go ahead 
And thank you. Yes, uh, during the Great Depression, Senator Prescott Bush attempted a military coup of the United States. And uh, the, the name I have running through my head here is Colonel Smedley Butler. I believe it was the uh -huh. person, the uh, officer they recruited for this. And he actually wrote a book about it you can find it on Amazon if you search for uh, Smedley Butler. War is a but, Racket um, is the name of his, his writing. There we go. Yep. And uh, they recruited him to uh, lead a military coup of the United States. He went along long enough just to find out what the plan was, and he ratted him out to Congress. They had congressional hearings about this. This is not conspiracy theory. This is facts in the congressional record. Anybody can look it up and see for themselves. So there's been a plan to transform the United States for decades into more of a police state. So this isn't anything new. Now, crime is the lowest point it's been in 40 years. So it's not that violent we have a crime, crime problem. Yeah. It's not that we have a yeah. Well, it's not that we have a violence problem. Not that we have a crime problem. It's that they've wanted to ramp up homeland security, military militarization of the police and the surveillance society for ages. And this is their excuse to do it. Every little hobgoblin they can dream up, fake up, and pull out from under every bush, they're going to do it to try and gain more power over the citizenry. It's and true. I am absolutely appalled by it and against it. And everyone should educate themselves on past history so we don't repeat any of that crap again and to make sure none of these plans that have been in place for decades come to fruition. So I hope everybody will go out there and research that and see for themselves. All right, Doug, thanks for your call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Michael. He's in Rhode Island. Michael, you're on Free Talk Live. Michael. Uh, hey, guys. How are you doing tonight? Hey, welcome, sir. Go ahead. Cool. Um, so yeah, you were you, you guys were talking about 2016 elections a little bit earlier. Well, you you, you loosely mentioned it, and uh, yeah. you know since it's new it's New Year's Day, I figure this is pretty relevant. Um, so are we looking at 2016 or are we looking at 1992? A Bush versus a Clinton again? <laughs> right. Yeah. What's well, old is new again. You know. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, history repeats itself, and styles come back into fashion, right? But uh, well, it's funny because I mean, you know, during the 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 original Bush election, it was right when I was around starting uh, doing you know internet radio it was before podcasting, and uh, I had said during that election, you know, I, I, that I thought in terms of political choices, I said you watch. What will happen, and it happens every election, and this is when I was just first getting into politics because I was like, you know, just 18, Teenager, 19, yeah. you know, and uh, I had said, look, watch what will happen. It'll, just imagine everybody who you know of in politics who's like a name in politics now, and then imagine the worst possible choices you can pick out of the names of people who are known in politics. Imagine the worst of the worst, and that's what we'll get, and then that's what happened with Bush, and I said – and I had said, and I have this on radio somewhere, I've been meaning to find the clip, and, you know, hey, it's been over a decade now, and I still haven't mm. ever done it. But uh, I need to dig up the clip where I had said, I said, watch, this president will be the worst president in history in terms of what's going to happen in terms of the effects that this guy is going to have on government. Now, I'll Yeah, but they're always the worst president uh, in yeah, history. I no, mean, but I, I, I yeah. admittedly, I'm biased. I'm now, biased. Now Obama is worse than Bush. No, but and I, I really don't think that it was that, 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 that bad. I, I mean, know. I agree with you in here. I don't. Every, every next president is going to be the worst. Yeah. I don't agree. I don't agree, and I don't agree because I think that. So you're for saying example, Bush was worse than Obama? I, uh, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, sure. Since then, it's been that no, way. They just I mean. keep getting worse. Yeah, that's all. I was but saying. no, I think that that uh, the at least during the uh, the economy seemed to be kind of okay during the Clinton administration. I mean, mm. I don't think that they, you know that yes, presidents are bad in general. And yes, the trend has been worse president right. since Clinton Bush. Clinton seems like a golden but I think boy now. Bush started, yeah, exactly. Right. But Bush started this, and I think that the reason why, and again, I, I, I'm biased, but I thought originally my my internal bias was to say this guy is so religious that he's going to start breaking rules, and then it's going to lay down this foundation of abuse of power. Well, and the, look what's happened. Well, the, I mean, come on. We're, let's give. Let's I've got a be, bias. Be, I've got a fair. bias, and my bias played out. Sorry. Let's, let's be fair. I mean, Bill Clinton also presided over Waco and a large increase sure. in the police state and the war on drugs and Somalia. all of that. But looking he back, didn't start the war on drugs. But, no, he me? presided over a you know continuance of it. Uh, looking back on all the while claiming he smoked pot, but looking back at his uh, administration, he I seems like a small <laughs> government guy compared to Bill. Uh, you know, compared to George Bush. I mean, Bill Clinton seems like a small government dude based on you know the reality george bush dramatically increased the size of government so right. i think that they have gotten worse over time 
So we agree on that, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, Michael, go ahead with your thoughts. Anything else you want to share? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I mean, that was really my point. I agree with you, Ian. Like, um, the next president is always going to be worse. And, yep. and I don't think it's the person. I don't think it's the the individual who makes decisions, right? It's like the system of, of the hallucination of authority. Itself. I don't know. Is that what you're saying, though, is that the next president is always going to be worse? It seems well, yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's Gover- always going to be true, but why not? Because they make the government larger every time, and they don't ever shrink it. So yeah. you're saying so- that Clinton was worse than Bush won, and you're saying that Bush won was worse than uh, Carter. Yeah, because they keep uh, they keep yeah. adding government yeah. and keep making things even worse. They keep continuing the programs that the previous presidents uh, put in place, and then they add to it. Sure. I mean, okay. Yeah, Bush, Bush, 40, Bush 41 was Jimmy Carter— Number two, like uh, I think that the, the the purpose of of government is to expand and to grow and to increase its jurisdiction, right? And the longer period of time that it it goes on for, the more likely it is to expand and to grow. And the people who are in office are kind of irrelevant. You know, if Barack Obama had actually gotten into office and fulfilled some of his campaign promises, like closing Guantanamo Bay and uh, ending the wars, then, you know, I would not say that he's worse than George W. Bush. But Well, if Bush had fulfilled his campaign promises, we'd be saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Michael, for the call tonight. <laughs> Appreciate it. Toll-free numbers, 855-450-FREE. Also, Bush's promise was to not nation-build either. Right. Yeah, he broke that one, too. More coming up here in moments. You can dial in toll free 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. I lost 18 pounds in just four days. Hi, I'm James Zetta. If you're like me, you've already tried and failed at many diet and weight loss plans. The 18 and 4 weight loss plan requires no exercising, no diet pills or additives, no laxatives, no meal replacements, and no diet drinks. The 18 and 4 program is crystal clear with a day-to-day, step-by-step, and meal-to-meal guide. If you're not satisfied with your results, I will give you my 30-day full money-back guarantee. Go to 18and4.com. That's the number 18, I-N, the number 4.com. How many good people procrastinate? When was the last time you updated your last will and testament, your living will, and your health care power of attorney? If you could get these documents included with your Legal Shield membership for no additional charge, wouldn't it just make sense to have the peace of mind of owning a Legal Shield membership? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Friends of local man Carl Brewster told reporters this week they are all absolutely at a loss as to how he is not completely depressed. I've known Carl for years now, and he really is a great guy, you know, super nice. But honestly, I don't know how he doesn't go home and cry himself to sleep every night. I mean, walks dogs for a living and no one will ever date him. I really don't get it. Saying that they were baffled at how their close friend managed to remain even moderately happy day in and day out given his life circumstances, sources confirmed they were regularly confronted with Carl's perplexingly gregarious and affable demeanor. I mean, Carl's life really, really sucks, but somehow he manages to wave good morning to me every time I see him and he always has this big smile on his face. Maybe he's on some kind of medication. Things have always been really awful for Carl, but he's never really been depressed. I mean, I make three times as much money as him, and I'm totally miserable. Honestly, we all thought he would have killed himself by now, but he hasn't. This is the Onion News Network. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? 
Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up anything that you want right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Johnson. Uh, we've talked about the police and apparently how arrests are down 66% overall in New York City because the police are engaging in a work stoppage, not because of any sort of principled concern about you and I, but because they want the mayor to respect them, and so they're showing how uh, politically strong they are by cutting off any kind of ticketing, and many of the nonsense, no uh, sort of victimless crime arrests that have gone on historically in New York City, they are not happening now, and for how long that'll go on, we don't know. Uh, that's one of the things we've discussed. Also, the military equipment going to the police is up, so despite the lack of the arrests all around the country, we're seeing more militarization of the police, and of course, arrests continue in all the other cities, so what's going to happen in the long run, we don't know. We'll keep we'll keep an eye on things, though, and let you know as things develop. Of course, your calls come first. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Also, on the way here tonight, Johnson will tell us the best way to stay anonymous, according to a, what apparently is a leaked NSA document. Johnson has that story for us. Also, the story I briefly mentioned that a crowd formed a human shield to try to protect a man from being arrested for smoking cannabis down in Florida. We'll tell you about what happened there because I don't support violence as a solution, but I do think it's interesting and I like the idea of people taking physical action to prevent the police from mm -hmm. affecting arrests like this. I think that's a very exciting uh, development. Let's go to Matthew first, though. He is on the line via Skype. Our Skype username, by the way, is lrn.fm. Matthew, you're on the air on Free Talk Live. Gentlemen. Hey, welcome, Happy sir. New Year. Hey, Happy New Year to you. What's on your mind tonight? I just wanted to point out the uh, logical fallacy in, in Molyneux's argument about how the shop owners were, in fact, victims of Eric Garner. Uh, Molyneux, you're referring to, is a uh, Stefan Molyneux. He is a uh, internet philosopher. He's a libertarian, or at least he was. I don't know if he <laughs> would describe <laughs> himself that way uh, now, or a voluntarist. And, and, and just recently, he threw all, all agorists under the bus by suggesting that if you, uh, don't, if, if you don't pay taxes— that's totally legitimate to snitch on somebody and sick the police against them if you are a business owner. Thereby, what he was suggesting was that Eric Garner, by selling loose cigarettes, was somehow victimizing the shop owners who had their licenses to sell cigarettes from the state, right. which is pretty disturbing. But go ahead with your comments on that. Well, th the problem with that is, is the majority of people that sit outside of bodegas and sell Lucy's are not people that have bootleg cigarettes. There, there was, most of the time, it's not a tax that was avoided. Most of the time, guys like Eric Garner are buying that pack of cigarettes for $10. The state, the city are getting their taxes, and then he sells them to people who maybe only want one. Maybe they only smoke when they drink. Maybe they're trying to quit, and he sells them for a dollar a piece, mm -hmm. makes $20. The yeah, free but the state wants work. money on that, too. Right. You, you got to exactly. remember, the state wants money on that, too. Also, the state wants money on uh, taxing the paper that was made to manufacture the package. Uh, the state wants money on the plastic that was made to manufacture well, wait, the wrapper wait, wait, for the what package. The is, state wants money on the gas that was taken to deliver the cigarettes to the store. Yeah, but what he's saying is that uh, that most of these Lucy's sellers are paying the state taxes when they buy the pack. Correct. Right, but no, 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 no. You see, you have to pay another tax because 
because every t- time anything happens with a product, right. you have to pay another tax. That's you what see, any times the, yeah. the gas, you know, the product is moved with gas. Uh, you have to uh, remember that the workers are paid to pay to take the uh, the product off the truck. Uh, you got to tax those workers out of their every salaries. Every time a product changes um, hands, the state wants to be there to take a cut from the sales. No, no. Exactly. Anytime yeah. the light hits the product in a different way, <laughs> the state wants taxes. Anytime the air changes and blows on the product from a new direction, <laughs> the state yeah. wants taxes. Right. That's and, that, and that, yeah, it's true. That, 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 that's understood. But I think the point is the people that are willing to spend $1 on one cigarette are not willing to go into that store and buy a full pack of cigarettes for $10. So There's an argument to be people, made there. Yeah, I would the, say the, so. Those people weren't going to be customers in the first place. They, they were going to simply maybe wait two weeks and buy that full pack. They certainly weren't going to buy $21 cigarettes. If that was the case, they would have just bought the pack. So mm-hmm. he the, the free market for this guy and the not allow people to or, or to maybe uh oh we're losing like so. every third word from you now but I think I I understand where you're coming from and I think it was a good call thank you Matthew toll free number tonight eight fifty five four fifty free yeah I uh it was pretty disturbing the audio clip that we played last night from Stefan Molyneux basically the the idea that. If somebody has, uh, you know, not paid taxes and is out there selling loose cigarettes, that that's somehow victimizing the store owners who somehow own the 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 purchase. You know, like that they own all the customers somehow, and that they they right. uh, the customers owe them their business because they paid some sort of license fee, and so therefore anybody selling Lucy's is is uh, is actually committing a crime with a victim. It's pretty it's a pretty outrageous statement because really what that what that saying is is that every agorist, every person who does any business without a state license, without state permission, who's just doing business without asking, uh, you know, some bureaucrat for their seal of approval, that they're all committing crimes with a victim, and they're, therefore it's legitimate to snitch and to to tell on those people right. and to take police action against didn't, them. He threw every single address under Stephen the bus. did Stephen Molyneux do the monkeys in the ladder in the water thing, the video, like where monkeys it's like in the in the five water. monkeys and like one monkey tries to climb a ladder to get a banana, and then they spray that monkey with water. Oh, and then, you yeah, know, yeah, they, yeah. Che- they keep changing out the monkeys, right, getting mm-hmm. rid of the monkeys. Like the monkeys all start off in orange jumpsuits or whatever, and then they add like fresh monkeys in a different suit or something like that but essentially what happens is that they keep changing out the monkeys until no monkey was there where there was ever uh a, you know a banana at the top of the ladder they they took away the banana and they took or no no sorry they no, took, the banana stays the banana stays there but they take away the water and the, essentially so the monkey what happens, could go and get the banana right. but they have been essentially told by the other monkeys to not go and get the banana right they, right? they attack anyone who tries to climb the ladder to yeah. get the banana and, and uh, to the point where they eliminate all of the monkeys who knew about the water spraying, right. and none of the monkeys were were left who knew about that. And but even all the new monkeys, no one tries for the banana, right? right? Because they all are afraid they're going to get attacked if they yeah. go to try for this banana. Um, and I think Stefan Molyneux isn't that the didn't he do that video? And and mm, the funny thing is, is, if he did that video, like how experiment. could he not see the connection between this and the business owners and the tax? It's the same thing. It's pretty shocking. Let's go to Derek. He is on the line of uh, Derek J. Uh, is on the line via Skype. Hey, Derek J. Hey, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to say I don't think Stefan Molyneux is as stupid as everyone's making him out to appear because of this one clip in one of his thousands. Oh, I wouldn't say he was stupid. I think that what he said here is is an outrage and has thrown all agorists under the bus. Yeah, so he's written several books on the topic of uh, self ownership. And more specifically, you know, what a free society would would really look like. And I don't think that, you know, one second clip is really doing him any justice. I think a lot of people are are, are taking this too far and seeing what they want to see. So I'll I'll give you my perspective on what he was really saying. It was not about uh, cigarettes sales being a, a victimless crime. Obviously, he gets that. Yeah, people selling things to each other. Uh, voluntarily, there is no harm in that. Where he says there was harm or a victim created is because the store owner was pestered by him being on his property. It's not about selling untaxed cigarettes or selling something that, uh, you know, he could have been selling hats. It doesn't make a difference if a store owner he has every right to get you removed. I don't think that was discussed at all in the the context of that conversation. Yes, it was, because the caller in that call actually call, tries to call Stefan out and say, hey, man, you know that uh, selling cigarettes untaxed is a victimless crime. But 
he's like, yes, obviously I know that. I, I, don't, I can't believe that all of the people who are upset about this video don't do themselves the favor of going back and listening to it again. Stefan's not an idiot. He gets that it's a victimless crime to sell cigarettes. The part where a victim is created is because the store owner called the police. He was obviously pestered that this man was out selling. Now, if he didn't throw all agorists under the bus by saying this. Agorists could be doing business on government property. You could be doing it at City Hall. You could be selling your cigarettes in a public park. So an analogy much. would be if you had just started announcing Peace News Now right now and just started doing your show on Free Talk Live. Well, that wasn't brought up. In the, I mean, I listened to several minutes of the conversation, and I did. I honestly did not listen to the full two-hour-long show, but I did listen to several minutes of the conversation, and it was not mentioned necessarily that the individual was on the store's property at the time. Maybe, you know, on a sidewalk out front or something like that. Hang on, Derek. We can bring it back here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. 
Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like right here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Happy New Year. It is New Year's Day with you in the studio. It's Ian. And Johnson. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features on the site. If you like what we're doing with Free Talk Live, then you can support the show directly by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And that's the idea, is the money that we take in for the AMP program is put right back into Free Talk Live. So Free Talk Live can get on more radio stations. We've got nearly 160 radio stations right now. We could have more than that, but it takes money to market the show effectively to other stations. We can also expand our satellite footprint. And in addition to that, we can bring more internet listeners on board and we can do it all for just five bucks a month from you. You get perks like access to the AMP only call in lines, the AMP only podcast, forum, and the new, newish, I guess, AMP only Facebook group. Go to amp.freetalklive.com to get started there. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Now, we actually have uh, Derek J on the line with us here via Skype. He's calling to defend. Stefan Molyneux, uh, in regards to the comments that were made on a recent episode of his show, I believe the show was from, or at least posted on YouTube on December 30th, and there was a link uh, that I posted last night to it on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, so if you want to go and pull up the audio directly, you can do it that way, or if you listen to last night's show, we when Christopher, Christopher Cantwell was on, uh, we did play that audio back and comment on it, and Derek, you're saying it's been misinterpreted. You're saying Chris and I, uh, we blew it last night that uh, Stefan Molyneux was not saying that uh, anybody who's doing business without government permission deserves to be snitched on because they're causing a victim among those who have already gotten permission slips and licenses from government. Specifically, you know, one of the examples that was discussed was the idea of selling loose cigarettes is somehow causing a victim, that, like that the, uh, the store owners who've gotten licenses to sell cigarettes are somehow being victimized by that. To me, it sounded like a very generic conversation last night uh, that was being had, not one that was specific about a circumstance. Uh, Nathan was uh, sent me a note here saying that last night he says Molyneux said something like, I don't know if he was on private property or being a nuisance because there's no video. So it sounds to me like it was you know, just a general conversation about how he thought that selling cigarettes created a victim or selling a Lucy's. It does seem like a specific instance to me of we there is video. I don't know what he's talking about. The video in of Eric Garner's death features him in front of the But store. he wasn't selling cigarettes in that case. No, but he could have been bothering customers, frightening people, whatever. We we know from his record that he's been arrested for being out in front of businesses dozens of times. So this is like get this guy off of our property. I don't care what he's done. You let me ask you this. In a free society, you think business owners would have every right to shoo customers from their property, right? Sure, but why not talk about this as a property rights issue instead of making generic comments about how, you know, the the store owners are somehow being victimized by some guy selling Lucy's? And why not comment about how, well, this is tragedy to the commons and the sidewalk is state owned, and so therefore, unfortunately, the business owner can't uh, have all the control over it that he wants to? None of those comments were made in that also, discussion. Also, I take issue with the whole like he's been arrested dozens of times outside businesses because the the one story, the one news story that that supposed Supposedly came from the way it was cited in that news story where they were reporting that would have put his record back well into when his records should be sealed because he was very much a very young child supposedly getting arrested for loitering outside of businesses so that i call that one particular statistic that has been reused over and over again uh into question and then the other thing is is that there's also a lot of countering reports from people in the neighborhood who say that this guy was an upstanding guy and that he was not uh what the police and the media have made him out to be Right. There weren't specific comments about one situation. It seemed like a very generic statement that Molyneux was making. And, you know, maybe that's not what he intended to say. But when the caller started to call Molyneux out and the caller was taking a true liberty oriented position, 
Molyneux kept breaking in to tell him that, no, no, this is a crime with a victim. And I think the caller in that particular case was right. Now, obviously, we don't have the audio with us tonight to uh, to replay. So this is. I mean, I would take issue with someone setting up a business, especially a competing business, within someone else's business. Yeah, that- and somebody felt victimized by this. I mean, to say that there was no victim is crazy. The police were called. Somebody felt victimized. <laughs> Just because somebody feels upset that someone's selling Lucy's doesn't mean there's been an, a victim created, though. Well, if, you don't have a right to not have your feelings hurt, right? Look, but it's OK. So you're right in that it should have been framed as a property rights issue and it wasn't. So fault Molyneux there. But otherwise, this makes total sense. I would want someone gone from my property. I would feel like you've got but it wasn't clear that anybody was on anyone's property. All if right, somebody right. was outside of a store in a city, they're on public property. Well, I guess I just don't know all the details. I just it sounded a little crazy to me, like people tearing down Stefan and, and sort of acting like uh, he's he's stupid or something. And I'm like, no, I don't really- think we were acting like he was stupid. We were saying he was wrong about this, and yeah. we were surprised that he would take such a position. His caller was shocked. Stefan Molyneux by, by this. Here's how I feel about Stefan since recently, and I, you know, I I really didn't want to believe a lot of the things I've been hearing about him. Like, and I went and I listened to a lot of the clips. I mean, he's been catching flack on all fronts. From a bunch of different people who struck me as jealous. And then I went and Mm -hmm. listened to a lot of things. And, for example, a lot of the anti-women comments that he's been making, I I went and I was like, no, there's no way. And and then I go and listen to it, and it's like, wow, this guy is collectivizing left and right. And he should know better. And... I just, here's how, the way I think of it, because of, again, I my mom is a cancer survivor. I think the man's got chemo brain. What That's, does that mean, chemo brain? Chemo brain. When you go through chemotherapy, it affects your mental function hmm. a lot. And I just think that he's currently suffering from he's a severe it. lack, a severe amount of mental decline. Well, and now, Johnson, to be I fair. I think he'll get it back. I to, mean, but. To, but to be fair, the people who support Stefan Molyneux are saying that those clips with the, the women's statements have been edited heavily and that they're not representative of what he actually thinks that he. Does. What I listened to was unedited. So. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't There's know. There's so people trying to tear each other down. There are so few yeah. voices spreading the ideas of complete liberty that I just feel like it's, that's it's, one thing. It's in self destruction. That's one thing I do want to say that I completely agree with you on is I'm so tired of negative libertarians. I, I, Shut up. <laughs> that's how I feel about it now. It's like people who are just complaining constantly. There's a certain well, that's class what libertarians of people. Do. But I, it's okay to point out when people are wrong. It is okay yeah. to point out when people are wrong. But I, Like I, when I, Stefan Molyneux filed a DMCA takedown request against a critical YouTube channel. That was wrong, right? Don't you agree? I don't know all the details on that. I, I, I really try and stay out of this stuff because it's – it's. Uh, so you know, do you tra- want to know the details? Because there was a channel called True Shibes and there was another one. Uh, and Stefan Molyneux's manager, Michael DeMarco, I think is his name, filed a DMCA, which is the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. It's a government thing, uh, a request with YouTube saying, that, you know, this channel's violated our copyright. You need that, you know, something needs to happen. They took the channels down. And, you know, when this was brought to people's attention, because, you know, they didn't say it was Stefan who did it. It was his manager. So somebody brought it to Stefan's attention and said, hey, your manager did this. You know, do you endorse what the manager did? And Stefan stood by his manager actions this after he's made statements on his own radio show about supposedly being virulently anti-intellectual property uh so he hasn't apologized for it he hasn't offered to make good and uh, that was a, that was like one of the you know one of the real bad bad things plus the comments about women um so you know when you're wrong it's good to admit that you're wrong and try to make restitution right Yes, it is, and uh, I don't hold him up as some sort of uh, god of morality. He's certainly human and fallible and makes mistakes. Uh, otherwise, though, his show is is very valuable in the sense that it, it brings good information to people. Um, just because someone has some personal faults in their life and just do some bad things doesn't mean all of the information that they provide is, is negative or bad. So I just want to make, make that distinction clear. Well, that's certainly true. I mean, obviously, as I've said, Stefan has a, a catalog of some really great stuff, which is why hearing him say some of the things that he said recently has been so shocking, I think, to so many people. And if that I is... Could, I want to speculate on that. I think it's possible that maybe he took a completely different route from you and maybe I, Ian, because 
I, I, I'll speak for myself, don't care if I openly violate laws. And I, I make a show of that. But mm -hmm. Stefan cannot do that. He's not in a position. It seems like he really wants to grow his channel. He, wants, he has a trajectory where he sees himself working within the state. He sees the, the collapse of the state as a multi-generational process. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, I want it my lifetime. So it could be possible that he's working within the system. That's where he sees his role. He's not willing to, to step outside of you know, the, the government uh, paradigm. That could that be? I think you're right about that. No, I think that's absolutely the case. Okay, well, th that explains some of his language. I would say, and and his actions. I would say probably his actions don't match his words, and the reason is because he feels threatened by the state. Derek J, thanks for the call, man. Appreciate hearing from you tonight. And by the way, Derek J is back on the air tonight on LRN.FM, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, he will be hosting Peace News Now, and you'll be having uh, James Cleveland on, correct? That's right. And Virgil Vadova was recently arrested at the Beaver Creek Police. I am terrible about mispronouncing Virgil's last name. It's apparently Vaduva. Thank you. As I understand it. So, hey, thanks for the call. Derek J. Freeman from DerekJ.me. He'll be back with us on Monday night as well. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, January 1st, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.70 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,184 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $318. Antiwar.com reports at least 33 people were killed and scores wounded in a suicide bomb in Ebe in central Yemen, which targeted a Shiite religious celebration that was attended by a number of leaders of the Houthi rebels. The Houthis have advanced into cities like Ebe, which were in Al-Qaeda territory in recent months, and Al-Qaeda has launched a number of suicide attacks against them. How many Houthis were among those killed and wounded is unclear, but leaders call it a massacre, adding that many women and children were also wounded in the incident. So was the city's governor, according to reports, though he is expected to survive. So far, Al-Qaeda hasn't claimed credit for the attack, though it is widely expected that they will. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by the Doublespeak Dictionary. The Doublespeak Dictionary by Leslie Star O'Hara satirizes the marked difference between the ideal of we the people and the reality of we the elite while offering an insightful glimpse into the clockworks of the totalitarian mind. Ever irreverent but never irrelevant, the Doublespeak Dictionary serves as a subversive and humorous but timely reminder that the emperor has no clothes. The Doublespeak Dictionary is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports a stampede killed at least 35 people during New Year's Eve celebrations in Shanghai. The Shanghai government said that large crowds started to stampede in Qin Yi Square on the Bund just before midnight, with authorities working to rescue and aid the wounded. The trigger for the stampede has yet to be confirmed, but state media and a witness said the incident was caused when people tried to pick up fake money thrown from a building. A man who brought one of the 43 injured to a local hospital for treatment said fake money had been thrown down from a bar above the street as part of the New Year's Eve celebrations. The man, who gave his family name as Wu, said people rushed to pick up the money, triggering the stampede. A woman who was on the boond described chaotic scenes, saying there were too many people and nowhere for people to escape. Dozens of distraught relatives gathered in the hospital lobby waiting for news, with some expressing frustration over a lack of information as police held them back. At dawn on Thursday, there were still small crowds of revelers trying to find taxis home, and workers were clearing up trash strewn around the boon. There was little sign of the mayhem that had broken out just hours earlier. In 2004, 37 people died in a stampede in northern Beijing on a bridge at a scenic spot during the Lunar New Year holiday. Holiday. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley said Wednesday he will commute the sentences of the four men remaining on Maryland's death row before he leaves office. The state abolished the death penalty in 2013, but the legislature did not make the law retroactive. O'Malley said the state attorney general has advised him Maryland no longer has an execution protocol and is unable to put anyone to death. Before he announced his decision, he talked to the families of some of the victims of the four inmates. He said he believes commuting the sentence will spare the families the ordeal of more drawn-out appeals. O'Malley, who pushed for the 2013 law, leaves office in mid-January after serving two terms. Maryland has a history of capital punishment dating back to 1638 when two men were hanged for piracy. The state passed a new death penalty law after the U.S. Supreme Court found executions constitutional in 1976. The number of executions across the United States dropped this year, and prosecutors and juries appear to have been more willing to accept sentences of life without parole. The Death Penalty Information Center reports that six states abolished capital punishment between 2007 and 2013, although none have done so since. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. An alarming new study finds that people suffering from stress-related disorders react poorly to being trapped in underwater elevators. A tired 398-month-old throws a tantrum, and a little clay thing is purchased at an arts festival. And now an eerily perfect recap of this week's news. The Catholic Church reversed its long-held stance against gay marriage this week after meeting Connecticut couple Tony and Craig. The vacationing pair dazzled the Pope and assorted clergy with their witty conversation and true loving affection for each other, leading Vatican officials to conclude that love is love and it's silly to put restrictions on it in this day and age. The Chinese people announced that they would be willing to forgive most of the United States $1.16 trillion debt if Americans agreed to dress up in costumes and perform silly dances for them. Chinese officials encouraged U.S. citizens to wear sequined vests and prance around while slapping their big fat American tummies, promising that the more humiliating the performance, the more debt will be erased. In sports, NASCAR fans are deeply puzzled by a mysterious black family seen attending multiple races. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want right here, toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Happy New Year. It's Ian here with you. And Johnson. We're doing the very first episode for 2015, and uh, you're welcome to share, I don't know if you've got some New Year's resolutions or something, whatever it is that you want to talk to us about, uh, you can certainly do that here. We've talked about police corruption, specifically what's happening in New York City, where the police are actually doing the right thing for the wrong reason. They have decided to stop Stop enforcing BS uh, laws, crimes with no victim, tickets, things like that. They're not writing tickets. Tickets are down like 90-something percent uh, for the most part. And then general arrests are down uh, 66%, percent, which is huge. And so that was what we opened the show with. But we've also talked about some other stuff like the military equipment that is going to the police is up significantly in the last three months since the Ferguson situation. Also questioning whether or not people are actually excited about Bush and Clinton. It's too bad that the logical outcome of this is, like, pretty bad. Like, you know, the police are doing the right thing, right? The right Mm -hmm. thing here being, like, let's not be scumbags and arrest people for victimless crimes. Right, but only because they want to get back at the mayor. The only reason is, well, not just that, too, but how are they getting back at the mayor? Well, we're going to screw the budget up, right? And it's like, okay, well, then the logical end result of that is going to be that because the budget is taking a, you know, a hit, we're going to have to fire some cops, you know? So mm, like the, the, that won't happen though. They're protected by the unions. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they'll have to fire. It's hard them. as hell they to fire the police. It. Yeah. But and basically once you get past the tenure or, phase, you, or the other good. thing will be, okay, well we can't fire you. So guess what's going to happen to your salary? You know, like, it's, Ooh, now they might, I don't know. That's probably contracted too, because usually the union contracts specify increases in salary. At some point. So what are they going to do? Then the city's going to get sued, you know, like, because they're not going to, at some point the sued money runs whom? out by whom? Uh, the unions, when they say, we have to do this, sorry. Like, we don't have the money. It doesn't exist. You know, this, the budget took a hit. There's no budget. Sorry. Hmm. I don't think it's going to work out that way, Johnson. I guess fi- we'll find out over time. Like, but- at some point, where's the money going to come from? I mean, well, There's know. plenty of money being collected. And, I mean, sure. the, mo- the, the money going to pay police officers isn't coming out of the tickets that are being written. Isn't it? I don't think so. No, I think that's probably you know, basic to the, the budget of the city. It's, it's not requiring that they write tickets to get a paycheck. They are, they are, there are quotas. What, what are the quotas? Yeah, I was going to say, what are the quotas about then? Well, that's probably extra money that goes to the police department. Any ticket money is over and above the budgeted amount. So they're budgeting whatever they're budgeting from right. the tax dollars to pay the police officers. And then whatever they can write goes back into the either, – either goes into the police – coffers or the city coffers i don't know how it works in new york city but that's probably one it's probably one thing or the so, other so what you're saying is that the donut supply this year is going to be real grim <laughs> maybe i don't know it'd be interesting to see how this all shakes out and we'll certainly keep you in the loop here at 855 450 free you can let us know what's happening that's uh, the toll-free number 855-450-3733 there was a story i had here and then we'll get into your nsa story johnson about the florida crowd that uh, tried to stop a police officer from arresting a man for smoking marijuana I think this is an interesting story because I've said that I don't think violence is the solution. I was looking but, at that one as a uh, as prep before coming over here, as I, so it was yeah. kind of in my thing too. And I was looking at the video, and I never really saw. There's a video. Oh yeah, there was a video, and it was very hard. I kept flipping through the video to try and find like where did they form this wall and i never could find the point this article that i have does not have the video embedded in it so i'd be interested in seeing all right i'll see if i can find it what that is this one is from alternate or actually you know what maybe it does let me turn the no script i have no script on on my (laughs) browser so there may be a video in there no no there's no video on this page so uh just we'll just go with the story and if we can find video that'd be great Uh, Alternate.org, in addition to the mass protests nationwide against police brutality, incidents where ordinary citizens speak up, start recording, and attempt to intervene when they see excessive and abusive cop behavior are being reported more frequently. Earlier this month in New York City, a woman angrily denounced police who were beating an already restrained teenage boy as others made sure to film the incident to hold the plainclothes officer accountable. It's possible that the assembled and outraged crowd prevented further abuse, and with the help of the cell phone video, the cop faced at least some discipline from the department. This past weekend in Delray Beach, Florida, dozens of people quickly organized to stop what they believed to be a petty and unnecessary arrest. That night, Delray police entered a neighborhood after seeing a man walking down the street smoking. The officers thought the smoke smelled like marijuana, so they decided to pursue the man. 
When he entered a home nearby, the police followed and tried to apprehend him. They were surprised when about 20 people came out of the home and surrounded the man to prevent the arrest from taking place. One officer said, quote, they formed this shield and started to get aggressive. <laughs> uh, officer, when someone's defending another person from being aggressed against, that's not aggression. It's aggression when you do what you were doing. When you, officer, go and try to put handcuffs on a man for smoking mm. a joint, that is the aggressive act. People saying, hey, stop it. That's not an aggressive thing. He says, uh, another officer said, quote, the next thing they know, there's 70 to 75 people out there. The officers had to use pepper spray to get the people back. The crowd grew rowdy, and at some point, an object was hurled at the windshield of a police cruiser. By the end of the night, police had detained four people on charges, including inciting a riot. The incident could foretell greater citizen intervention against what they perceive to be abusive and unnecessary policing and shows the urgency of reining in the overcriminalization of American life. So what I think is interesting here is that people are actually taking further steps than to just stand by with their mouths agape watching the police abusing people. Now, there's risk involved here, right? Like if you get in the way of a cop trying to arrest someone— Odds are good you're going to get hurt or arrested yourself. There's no doubt that there's risk involved here. But I would say there's less risk mm. in doing this than shooting a cop, which seems to be the solution of some people to the police uh, problem, the problem of bad cops. Some have suggested that violence is the solution. I firmly oppose that. I don't think that violence works. I think it, it begets more violence in the future. But I think if you can use words, cameras, or physical... Uh, your physical body to to block the police in a peaceful manner, then I think that is something that could be done. I think it's more likely that people are going to engage in that because a lot of the people who talk about violence, they don't actually do it. They just like call Free Talk Live and advocate it or come, you know, beat around the bush and suggest violence. They don't actually go right out and do it. It's hard to find people who are willing to actually do violence against right. the police. Um, you know, if it wasn't that hard, then people would be doing it, right? Like it would be something that would be more common, but it's not. Maybe it would be less difficult to find people who would be willing to form a human shield and prevent the police from reaching a man who is smoking marijuana or something like that. Now, again, you're going to get arrested. You, you know, you'll be charged with obstructing government administration or obstructing police or disorderly conduct or something like that. But at least then you'll have the chance to beat it in court rather than being a, a corpse. You know, I think that's a that's a better way to go about things. And it also if you've got enough people in an area who have the willingness to put their, themselves on the line in that way, then that may indicate that you may be successful at a jury trial ultimately. Right. So if you get charged right. with a class, A, like here in New Hampshire, you get a class A misdemeanor, you get the chance at a jury trial. Uh, if you get hit with disorderly conduct and they're going at you with uh, with class A and I don't know what it is, what the equivalent is in New York. But or Florida, I guess, is where this this took place. Uh, but, you know, at the, at the very least, then you've got the chance for jury nullification on top of that. So having a citizen, uh, having a group of people who are upset at the police, they're tired of the oppression of these victimless crimes. That gives you the opportunity to, one, take action on the scene in a peaceful manner, and then, two, take action again in the jury room to put a stop to these malicious prosecutions. I think that it could be. A useful tactic. Uh, presupposing that the jury goes your way, I, I've, I've just well, right. I mean, I'm I've talking, lost so much faith yeah. in juries. You know, like I what I meant I was just, the, the jury would have to be made up of people who were also pissed off, which right. so far seems unlikely to happen. Yeah, not when as they likely. have, the, you know, when the prosecution is going to have the ability to eliminate. Uh, people from the jury. Well, you also have the ability to eliminate people from a jury sure. as well as a defendant. But then you end up with, you know, homogenized idiots, you know, who don't that know anything about be... anything, and that's going to go in favor of the state. Yeah, well, in general. it's certainly true that juries do tend to go in favor of the state. Um, no no solution here is, a, is an optimal one, right? Yeah. The, like, there's no solution to the state that is a, a way that you can go that's not going to result in peaceful people being harmed, arrested, and, and all <laughs> of that, uh, and frustrated and having their time and their money stolen from them. But if we can avoid people getting shot to death, well, that's a step in the right yeah. direction. It's Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. Share your thoughts. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in New Hampshire people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me about my job, my kid's education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Coming up, we will talk about the Sony hackers. Who are they going to target next? Maybe... U.S. mainstream media organizations, but uh, Johnson's going to share with us from the NSA, a, an alleged leak where the NSA talks about how to keep yourself safe online. We'll get the uh, details on that. Your calls and thoughts are welcome here, and if you like Bitcoin or you're just curious about it, mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th. Bitcoin 
the Texas a second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, Texas. We're looking forward to it here. Mark and myself were there last year, and we're going to be back at the second one this uh, March 28th and 29th. I'm excited about it because this time it's going to be in the heart of downtown Austin, which I think will take it to the next level. Speakers, exhibitions, and a great opportunity to do networking as well as the second million dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. It's the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. It'll highlight what Bitcoin means to everyone and and concentrate on where the technology can go beyond just being a currency. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com. You can get your tickets there. And if you use code FTL, you will save $25 off their already very affordable $150 price point. So, again, $150 on its own isn't a bad price for a weekend-long convention. But you can save $25 by using code FTL. Plus, when you use code FTL, the Texas Bitcoin Conference will donate $25 to Sean's Outpost, which is a great Bitcoin-based homeless charity operating out of uh, Pensacola, Florida. So it's a great price for an awesome event, and we'll look forward to seeing you there March 28th and 29th the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, Texas, for the second annual Bitcoin Conference. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com. That's the Texas Bitcoin Conference in Austin. So our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. There's, of course, plenty to talk about. Your calls, if you make them. We've also got Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Johnson, are you uh, prepared to go ahead with the NSA thing? Looks like you've got some technical uh, difficulties Yeah, I do. Over You're absolutely right. I've, uh, I saw some... you grimace at your phone. Yeah, somehow the ago. story has disappeared when I was looking for the video. on the, Maybe uh, the NSA disappeared it. <laughs> Maybe. I was, I was looking up for the video as we were talking about that uh, incident that happened in Florida, the human wall. Somehow I... I managed to get rid of the tab that had the uh, NSA story. Well, we'll give you a moment on that, and uh, we'll talk about a related story, this one from The Intercept. Now, if you recall, Glenn Greenwald, who was the guy who kind of broke the Edward Snowden thing big, Mm -hmm. uh, he left The Guardian and ended up doing his own thing. He's got his own website now. It's called The Intercept. Uh, It's at firstlook.org slash The Intercept, which I think is a terrible a way to create a website, which is, you know, launch a site that's supposedly all yours underneath someone else's sites. Kind of weird. But nonetheless, uh, he's still been making big news from this site, and he's got a staff of reporters. This one is Jana Winter, and she is saying apparently the latest on this whole Sony hack, which, by the way, the Sony hack thing's been big in the news over the last several weeks. You may recall the U.S. government said they thought that uh, the FBI said that it was North Korea's government that engaged in the right. hacks. There was another headline recently that said that there's an alternative theory now suggested Gee. by a security company, uh, <laughs> not the FBI, but the security right. company that looked into this said I mean, this was a actually, private, not non, you know, a non. Uh, not incompetent, yeah. <laughs> not incompetent security firm that actually knows what they're doing suggests and, that maybe, hey, maybe it's not the country with only a thousand uh, IP addresses. Well, what they said was <laughs> that it was most likely former employees, which makes sense, right? Because yeah, gee, you know, when you have a security breach, it frequently is a former or current employee doing right. something like that. Um, so you know what the truth is there, I don't really know. But the latest from the hack group. They call themselves Guardians of Peace, the GOP. According to The Intercept, the hackers who infiltrated Sony's computer servers have now threatened to attack an American news media organization, according to an FBI bulletin obtained by The Intercept. The threat against the unnamed news organization by Guardians of Peace, uh, they said, quote, may extend to other such organizations in the near future, according to the bulletin. Referring to Sony only as USPER or USPER, USPER USPER 1, and the news organization as USPER 2, the Joint Intelligence Bulletin, dated December 24th and marked for official use only, states that its purpose is to provide information on the late November 2014 cyber intrusion targeting Sony and related threats concerning the planned release of the movie The Interview. Additionally, these threats have extended to USPER 2, a news media organization in the bulletin titled, whatever the hell, uh, they threatened to attack <laughs> other targets on the day after the uh, the FBI announcement. The bulletin reads that the Guardians of Peace posted pastebin messages that specifically taunted this organization for the quality of their investigations, as well as the FBI, and taunted them, and implied an additional threat. No specific consequence was mentioned in the posting. Now, some of the um, the emails that have been released from the Sony hack were pretty, you know, it, they're pretty shocking to some people. Like, 
you know, suggesting racism among the mm-hmm. Sony executives and showing just sort of the nastiness behind the scenes in Hollywood. Which, again, would kind of leak to it being, you know, former Sony employees rather than it yes. being North Koreans who can probably barely speak English. I tend to agree with that. Um, Now, so we don't know what this new threat is. We don't know which organization it is against, but it sure would be interesting if it comes true, right? Like if they hacked Fox News or MSNBC and you start to see what some of the emails have been sent between the people that work at those organizations, it could be some very revealing and outrageous things. I mean, I'm just totally speculating here, but uh, who knows what what, uh, we would end up finding out about that. So that's the the latest on the FBI hack or the uh, uh, the Sony hackers. Well, so you mentioned leaks, and uh, yes. so it's a good makes a good segue for uh, the story that I have. I finally I was able to recover it. So the uh, I was not thwarted by the NSA. Uh, so apparently leaked NSA documents. Uh, you know, apparently leaked by Citizen Four, aka Edward Snowden. Mm, uh, okay. You know he's still still cranking them out. Yep, says it's not easy to be truly anonymous online. Sure, there are plenty of uh, chat apps and secret sharing sites that claim to offer you privacy. Yep, but it's tricky to know whether U.S. intelligence agencies have a backdoor access to them. Yeah, you never know unless you can actually audit the code yourself. Right. And the best, how many people can do that? Mm-hmm. The best way to stay anonymous online has been to use Tor, a special kind of web browser developed to help the U.S. government employees hide their tracks online. Mm-hmm. But, but if you but if you want to be properly anonymous, you need a combination of extra services and websites on top of Tor to avoid detection. Plenty of online guides offer advice on the subject, but it's always been hit and miss. Now, leaked NSA documents provide a big clue on how to remain hidden. Hmm. They show that the agency has trouble breaking certain methods of encryption. Der Spiegel, I guess that's a German newspaper. Uh, published a collection of documents that detail what systems the NSA has been troubling decrypting. Previous documents have focused mainly on what the NSA is good at, not what it finds difficult. The documents reveal that the NSA ranks targets according to how difficult they are to decrypt. There are five internal levels, one to five. Level one is known as trivial, meaning it's pretty easy for the NSA to track targets or decrypt messages. But level five is catastrophic, which essentially means that the NSA can't break the encryption. The NSA says that it's right. that reading someone's Facebook message is a level two minor task, and monitoring yep. people using Tor is tricky, with the NSA classing that as a major level four problem. So any anonymous- Tor? Tor is level four? Yes. Out of five? Four out of five? Yeah, four out of five. Um, so any level- of an anonymity classed as level five known as catastrophic means that the NSA will find it nearly impossible to break. So are we going to find out what those things are? We are. All right, stand by. More with Johnson's story here. The NSA, a leaked memo. What do they say is the best way to stay safe from the NSA? It's Free Talk Live. (laughs) We've been patiently waiting. Waiting while you tried to ignore us. Waiting while you acted like we didn't exist. Waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio. Now at your fingertips. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. 
It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Twayambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll free, take control. 855 450 free. That's the point of the program. You can bring up anything you'd like. 855 450 3733. You can join us online and get interactive over at freetalklive.com. With you in studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Johnson. And we're going to continue here with Johnson's story about the NSA and what they recommend to keep you safe online. Now, this isn't something that they've put out publicly. This is a leaked document, of an internal document from inside the NSA, as leaked by Edward Snowden where they go down a list of, uh, you know, basically the stuff they have a tough time cracking. Now, what's interesting about this, too, is there are two things on this uh, list that I'd never heard of. So we'll see if you've heard two, of them. Two encryption technologies. Yep. So I'm going to go through that list here in a moment. Also want to remind you to visit us again at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live is brought to you by the uh, by Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Go to victimlesscrimespree.com. You can watch our very own Derek J in his hour-and-a-half-long feature-length documentary film. There's also an hour-long version for those of you short on time, time-challenged. Uh, it's a great documentary. I was uh, I had the honor of being the executive producer of it, and I'm just so proud of it. It's such a great movie. Actually, Derek was recently named in uh, the t- Tony Styles. Tony's been on the show before in the past. He's a talk show host and a liberty-oriented guy. He came out with the top 40, under 40, top 40 activists in the liberty movement under the age of 40. And Derek J was number one on that list. Cool. Now, Tony says it was like randomly chosen, so it wasn't like he was picked as number one, but still, it looks impressive that Derek J is number right. one on the list. <laughs> and uh, it was actually Derek J's victimless crime spree was cited as one of the reasons for uh, for that. So congratulations to Derek. And again, you can go and see it over at victimlesscrimespree.com. It is totally free. Hold off, Johnson, on the list of what could keep you safe from the NSA. We're going to go first to Clay. He's listening in Phoenix. Clay, you're on Free Talk Live. How's it going, guys? Clay, what's on your mind tonight? 
Well, I got a quick question for you, Ian, as well as Johnson. Hopefully you can shed some light on this, uh, at least from a libertarian perspective. Okay. Uh, I've got a conflict uh, ongoing with a neighbor. Uh, it's been going on for quite a few months now uh, regarding his uh, excessive face uh, within his vehicle. Every time he comes into the neighborhood, shaking the house, dishes, interrupting tutorials that I record because I work from home. Mm. Uh, but to make matters worse, last night he decided that it would be a good idea for him and his drunk buddies to uh, light M80s and throw them at my house. Oh, my. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem with people, you know, celebrating the new year. Let's shoot off some fireworks, have some fun. But don't run the risk of burning my house down. Yeah, no good. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm looking to you guys is because I don't know what else to do. I tried to talk to our silly homeowners association. Uh, I've actually got 38 documented incident numbers with the local police department, and they have yet to issue a citation. Uh, to <laughs> curb protect and behavior. serve. I, yeah, to protect and serve uh, themselves, obviously. So what would you guys do in this? So case? just to clarify something, these are next-door neighbors? Uh, they're actually directly across the street. Across the street. And they own the house, or are they renters? Well, it's kind of funny. We actually rent, but uh, there's a female that owns the place, and she's kind of got a live-in boyfriend who hasn't peaked mature, you know, past the age of 12, it seems. <laughs> so just to clarify, you're a renter. Across the street, the house is owned by a lady, and her boyfriend is one of the ones causing the problems? That is correct. Now, yeah. I tried to talk to him a couple of times. Uh, at one point, he told me I was talking to him like his father. Uh, mm. I don't know what kind of daddy issues he's got, if daddy hit him too many times, if it was a you know daddy bad touch type thing, or maybe daddy good touch. I don't know. He's kind of creepy, but I just I don't know what else to do here. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely frustrating. So the question, so what about the lady? What about the uh, the girlfriend? Have you talked to her? She's off her rocker. Uh, she is just out there, like, gone crazy. Uh, I, she, she is not approachable at all. So uh, the homeowners association, so, so you've, you've run up against a brick wall talking to them. The homeowners association you filed 38 documents with or whatever, or 38 complaints. Oh, no, that's, that's with the police department. Oh, with the police. Uh, with the, yeah, with the homeowners association. I think I've sent them 11 emails now. I've tried to call them multiple times. Uh, I just I cannot get any uh, assistance or even, hey, there's nothing we can do. Don't bother us with it. Wow. Just, now, what yeah. are the— what Well, is, you could—I mean, the other neighbors are going to be bothered by this, too, I'm assuming. And a couple have complained regarding the music, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be enough hmm. uh, to— you know, get him on the noise ordinance or anything like that. And quite frankly, I just, I don't care about, you know, the laws. I just don't understand why, you know, he, he has to be so immature. That's, that's neither here nor there, though. I just, I don't know how to remediate this. Okay, so question. I've never lived in one of these deed-restricted neighborhoods as an adult, so I don't know what the restrictions say or what the mm. rules are. Like, you know, what's the process if there's a grievance with the neighbor? Uh, is there someone who's in violation of their agreement here? If I mean, if he's agreed to, to keep quiet after certain hours, if, you know, if, if he's violating the rules, then there should be some sort of process uh, whether it's some kind of hearing uh, with the homeowners association, I don't know. Like I said, I've never gone through this before. But have you reviewed any of that? Uh, you know, the kind of the bylaws or whatever. And does that give you any kind? I, I of... have, and I have, and I've also looked at local uh, noise ordinances for the town itself, and he is definitely in violation of them. But the way they're talking, I essentially have to have uh, hard proof. Mm -hmm. uh, that he is violating. Well, if it happens so frequently, now, have, that can't be that hard to acquire. Yeah, you could stand well, out there with a video camera and a sound meter or something like that. But, you know, this is a lot of effort to go through, right, to try to control the neighbor. And then, of course, if you bring charges against him, then he might actually blow something up that you have. You know, he's only – right now he's only throwing the M80s right. uh, in your general direction. By the way, M80s aren't what they used to be. I was researching those the other mm -hmm. day. So even if they're buying something that says M80 on it, it's not, it doesn't have near as much gunpowder as they, they used to back in the glory days.
Um, but, uh, you know, certainly bringing the police against this guy could increase his aggression against you. Right now, you know, you may just be the guy across the street and you're just kind of bothered by his average behavior and he's not even particularly targeting you. You just happen to be the recipient of his bad behavior. If he is targeting you, then things could get worse, right? Well, he has admitted to continuing to do so simply for the fact that he can a, annoy me, and B, get away with it. Mm. So I do know that it is a targeted behavior. I'm just, I, I'm at a loss as to what to do about it. Johnson, what do you think? I, moved in your <laughs> <laughs> I was just having an internal, like, debate with myself in my head uh, where I was making fun of myself, and I was thinking, well, you know, the activist freaking <laughs> method would be to uh, take a video of him and post it to a blog and see if that doesn't increase his aggression. <laughs> <laughs> and then he submitted an editorial to the new local newspaper with a video of him and try and uh, shame and embarrass him. And uh, it doesn't the sound like he I'm can be shamed. A, a lot of these newer smart devices, great video recorders, uh, for something like that, terrible audio recorder because right. they've got background noise cancellation built into the microphones. Right. And yeah. without going out and spending, you know, hundreds of dollars on surveillance equipment, which I do not want to do. Right. You know, I, I don't want to control people. I don't. No, wanna, but you could have you know, a decibel meter that you you film in the. Uh, you know, even though it'll be terrible audio, you could put have the decimal meter on camera. You know, but as again, you're all of that is effort you are be, you're putting into trying to bring criminal well, charges. What are you going to do? You're not going to resolve it. Without... I say leave, get the hell out of the neighborhood. I mean, that's, yeah, that's... The, probably the easiest, most uh, yeah, you you're know, less least frustrating way. Yeah, you said you were renting, so at some point your lease is going to come up. How long do you have to wait? Uh, we've got a year and. Three months, and I'm I'm still working oh, on greater than a year lease. Convinced on New Hampshire, but uh, it's, it's kind of a hard push. So. How long's he been there? Um, a few months. How long he have you lived there? The uh, we lived. We moved in in March. He showed up in the neighborhood around May, June. There's a chance they might break there. up, right? Like, there's also the chance that, uh, you know, this guy is a troublesome boyfriend and, you know, maybe that thing will, will end. There's no good answer here. I, I don't have any good. Yeah. If you've got one for Clay, uh, if you've got an answer here, we'd love to hear from you. 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. What do you do about the noisy neighbor who's throwing M80s at your house and cranking the bass in his car stereo system? And apparently the homeowners association won't respond to inquiry and the police have already received complaints they won't do anything clay good luck let us know what happens more coming up shiny badges on your jacket shiny badges this is davi barker from shinybadges.com and i just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week month after month that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm so to make it up to you i'm offering a free gift the next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments and I'll send you something weird. I'm a mid-century architectural wonder, a house made entirely of glass. So you can imagine my fright when giant pieces of hail started falling from the sky. Did I mention I'm made entirely of glass? Everyone was running here, running there, trying to get out of the house, but what am I to do? I am the house. Your house can't protect itself. That's why the GEICO Insurance Agency helps make it easy to switch and save on homeowners insurance. You could save even more when you combine your homeowners with an existing auto insurance policy. Call GEICO, go to GEICO.com, or visit your local office. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. 
Are you making sense to the boomer mindset? I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com. 80 million baby boomers comprise 25% of the population and control most of the USA's wealth. As aging parents pass on, they'll control more. Boomers are 46 to 65 years old and regard themselves as midlife. They identify as neither young nor old. They're post minivan and pre retirement and they don't like being called boomers. They think me. Many of the purchases boomer couples make are individual purposes. They've been experimenters all their lives. If you want their attention, tell stories and keep it simple. If something seems complicated, boomers can dismiss it as, I don't need this. And if you're looking for work, you may be applying to a boomer, so relate accordingly. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. Enough time for you if you dial in now. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. And it is 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, it's Ian. And Johnson. We'll go down the list of things the NSA considers to be very difficult to impossible to break as far as encryption. It's a leaked memo. Johnson has that list, and we'll continue it here uh, in a moment. Also, if you've got an idea as to how to deal with the noisy neighbor situation that Clay was dealing with that he was talking about in the last segment, we'd love to hear from you. Even if it's tomorrow night, you can always call later on stuff on Free Talk Live. Maybe you're driving right now, and now's not a good time to call in. 855-450-FREE. We go to James in Arizona on Skype. James, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello? Yeah, John, I, I checked out Free Keen like you advised me to, the Facebook page. Okay, I guess. Yeah, and I saw some choice things about by someone, Johnson Rice, who says he only wants to date women that are, that are smarter than most people. Oh, you, he, you, meant, Johnson Rice, you meant stop freaking. So, may I continue? It's, it's quoting Johnson Rice. That's you, right? No, not if you're on freaking. I think you got it oh, wrong. I think you're confused. I, I think you're confused. You were not I don't think you meant freekeen.com. No, are you calling Stop Freekeen a bunch of liars by posting something that you put on the internet? Stop Freekeen. I... Exactly. You said Freekeen. I think you were getting it wrong. You are... are you the one that said that you don't want to sound like an egotistical, you know what, but you only hang around with people with genius level yes. IQs? Yes, and I that am. Not... And not that... Uh... That you know, come on, you know if you're smarter than somebody? Yes, uh, that's I am. That's called a logical fallacy, by the way. No, What's no, the logical it's not. That's fallacy. By you. fallacy. Yes, it is. <laughs> which fa- which fallacy? You. Just like I think, therefore I am, is a, a classic fallacy of logic, but it sounds right. But if you declare somebody, if you declare yourself smarter than other people, therefore you are. Yes, you are. No, no, you're not. No, it's not but therefore you are. It's, it's called if you're around somebody you with a 90 level a IQ. James, if you're around somebody with a 90 level IQ and you realize this person is a mouth breather, you realize that, hey, maybe when I'm hanging around with college graduates or people that act like college graduates and people who quote philosophers and quote things that the average dumb beer drinking, sports watching idiot American doesn't understand because they're at a hundred level IQ and that's all they do you know for a living is drink beer and and watch TV then you realize that you hang around with smarter people and it doesn't take that much to realize that 
doesn't mean that you're declaring yourself to be smarter and that therefore makes you smarter. Hey, minister, may I I'm not a respond minister. to that? Oh, okay. So, minister, you're I'm not a minister. You just, I, I have nothing to do with the church. A lot of, I hang a lot of, I hang around with a lot of people that drink a lot of beer, watch a lot of sports, and make a That's lot of money. That's not surprising to me, James. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the call. Toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. Let's go through the list here. The NSA and what this is a leaked memo as provided by Edward Snowden. Uh, what is it that they have a difficult time, a very difficult time cracking as far as encryption? So the NSA uh, identifies one anonymity, anonymity method that it warns is virtually impossible to break. Here is the method outlined in the leaked documents. Tor, VPN, C-Space, and ZRTP. So let's break that down. Tor is a special kind of web browser mm -hmm. that helps people to stay anonymous online by encrypting their web traffic. A VPN is a service that makes an internet connection more secure by using proxy servers to hide their real-world location. Like ProXPN. Right. C-Space is a kind of anonymous internet chat service. C that uses as in the letter C? Correct. Um, kind of anonymous internet chat service that uses heavy encryption to protect any file sent over its network. Hmm. I have and, not heard of that one. Exactly. I hadn't heard of that one either. And ZRTP. The last part of the method is a kind of encryption for voice calls and text chats. Hmm. Okay. Combine the above stack of services together using multiple kinds of encryption, a special web browser, and mm. a service to hide your location. And the NSA says in its internal documentation that it probably won't be able to read your messages. The leaked NSA Sweet. document says that the encryption method... Uh, results in a near total loss or lack of insight to target communications and presence. Solid. So that's it. Hey, thanks for sharing that list. I'm sure those out there interested uh, can do further research on their own, learn the technical details of one of each one of those things. So when you go real quick here in this uh, little article I found about uh, no dealing with noisy neighbors. Noisy neighbors. Yeah, why not? Let's so hear it. This is the first one that I was actually going to say, too, is I was going to suggest the potential of bribing the neighbor. You know, that's the thing. Come bearing gifts. Mm. While some may call this bribery, mm. we personally find that small requests, such as asking them to turn down the music, are more likely to be heated if it involves giving them something sugary for their trouble. Yeah, so I guess if you're going to make a batch of cookies, that's an okay thing. But if you come over with cash, then they'll get the idea that they can just keep getting cash out of you, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Fight fire with fire. Okay, so this may be a more childish way of dealing with this problem, but it's definitely the most satisfying and is free. Useful approaches are blasting music of your own, turning up the volume in your TV, or tapping the ceiling of the room handle. That's, yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah, that's because yeah, that's just going to upset the the other neighbors and then turn them against you. This is the one that Ian, you're probably most likely to do, which is the invest in your future. Say absolutely nothing about the excessive noise your neighbor is making. The benefit of this approach, they can't say anything about your noise when you decide to have a party of your own. Mm. And then the last one, which I kind of like, <laughs> is, oh, no, no, there's two more. Uh, the second to last one is <laughs> the creep. Whenever your neighbor starts to make too much noise, go over to their place, knock on the door, and wait for them to answer. When they come to the door, put on your creepiest smile, extend your hand, and say, hi, I'm blank, your name. Let the handshake linger for too long. Maintain that creepy <laughs> smile and don't say anything else. The goal here is to make this interaction as awkward and uncomfortable as possible for everyone involved. Do this every time your neighbors make too much noise. While this solution may take longer, what we're going here for is a Pavlovian solution to the problem. Eventually, your neighbor will dread these interactions so much that they will stop making noise altogether. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that one. Acceptance of defeat is the last one. <laughs> Unfortunately, while there are many ways to try and deal with noisy neighbors, the sad truth is that there is likely not much to change them if they are set in their ways. Mm -mm. However, what you do have complete control over he is- He paid good money for those ba yeah. that base system, <laughs> yeah. and he's going to get his money's worth. Yep. So, however, what you do have complete control over is how you react to and feel about the solution, the situation. If nothing else works, simply choose not to be upset about it. Instead well, of well, but working that su it sucks though for Clay, right? Because he was. It sounded like he had a recording studio. He said he was recording things. He has to stop recording when the guy with the bass right. drives by because it's screwing things up. I mean, that's no good. Yep. Um, you know what? Yeah. <sighs> I, again, yeah, at least he's I not like doing the creepy it all times. response. I mean, he's probably not. Uh, that is original. I have to give him. Yeah, credit I for haven't that. heard that one before. That one's pretty good. Um, but you know, I, the, <laughs> I heard your music. I just wanted to. What are you listening to? <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> so, can I, I come over and listen with you sometime? I would imagine odds are good he's not playing the bass for. 
too loud in his driveway? I mean, he's probably going from place to place. I think you should combine combine the bribery and the creep. I brought you some cookies. cookies. I was wondering if we could listen to your music together. Yeah, I then really, they might not actually eat the cookies. I really you, like it. Like if, you're super <laughs> cre- if you're super creepy when you deliver the cookies, they might be paranoid about them. That's they true. might not actually eat them. Yeah, I mean, you know, I want to hear from people who have real life solutions. I mean, that sounded yeah. more like a fun story. I don't know. I don't know. That creepy tried. thing sounds like it could possibly be a real life solution. Hmm. If you pull that off right and you do it every single time you go over to the person and you're not mean, mm-hmm. the person's just going to be tired of the interaction with you. You don't even have, you could go over and be friendly. Hey, buddy. I just want to yeah, talk. I heard the, you were partying in here. You're having the, a real good time. I want to come over and say, ah. Being the overly friendly neighbor. <laughs> Every time. I know you were home because I heard, I heard your music. the music. <laughs> I, yeah, I brought some bad. beers. Let's have one. Come on. <laughs> let's hang out. Not bad at all. <laughs> I was just over trying to record something, but I can't get any work done now, so I just came over to let's hang party. out with you. Let's party. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Toll free number here tonight, 855 450 free. Lots of other stuff to talk about in the news. We'll never have a chance to dig into them very deeply here. But uh, there's a neat story uh, over at the Washington Post by Radley Balco. And I don't think we're going to get a chance to go through this. I would love to. It's just so lengthy. It's a list of what he calls the horrifying civil liberties predictions for 2015. Ugh. And he just goes down this long list of just terrible things that he says will happen. And as you start reading through it, you realize it already all happened. What he's doing is he's going through a list of things that happened in 2014, presenting them as though this is some terrible stuff that could happen this year. But it's all already gone through. And if we get the chance, I would like to go through this list uh, because I know we didn't cover all of this. I mean, this is a right. this, this is an exhaustive list. Uh, like uh, you know, after fail, getting caught failing to turn over exculpatory evidence, some prosecutor will decide it's better to let potentially dangerous felons go free than to allow for the transparency that might reveal that they have broken the rules. The federal courts will rule the government no longer needs to actually convict you of a crime in order to punish you for it. The federal government will stop pretending to care about individual rights and decide that pretty much everyone is a terrorist. And, of course, he's linking to more detailed stories about right. all the things he's citing here. So maybe yeah. we'll get to that later on, but not tonight because we're out of time. It's been Ian here with you. And Johnson. And don't forget to check us out online over at freetalklive.com, and we will see you tomorrow night. In the meantime, freetalklive.com. Join us there. Free Talk Live. Hey, Jeff, what's up? South Florida, man, that's that's one of the best places to go out and have fun. There's nothing like going out and shooting a game of pool, drinking a few beers, and seeing some dancing girls. I mean... Nothing <laughs> quite like it, huh, Jeff? <laughs> nothing quite like it. Can't me. do that anywhere else in the country. <laughs> I mean, Only South in Florida. Florida. Tampa and Miami. Something. Well, in most other places in the country, you can't do it all in the same building. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. South Florida, man, it's in, you know, especially down in Miami, I mean, that's that's party station down there, guys. A lot of people don't even go out till around 11 o'clock or midnight. Lulu's Bar and Grill, they had it. They were selling these T-shirts. It said, "I lost my pants at Lulu's Bar last night." Lulu's. Yeah, Sounds Lulu's. a little fruity. No, no, no. It's a, it's a nice place down in downtown Fort Lauderdale. But anyways, uh, it must be a nice place with shirts that say, "I lost my pants at Lulu's." <laughs> <laughs> Come anyways, on uh, in. Leave your pants behind. <laughs> <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, January 1st, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.70 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,184 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $318. Antiwar.com reports at least 33 people were killed and scores wounded in a suicide bomb in Ebe in central Yemen, which targeted a Shiite religious celebration that was attended by a number of leaders of the Houthi rebels. The Houthis have advanced into cities like Ebe, which were in Al-Qaeda territory in recent months, and Al-Qaeda has launched a number of suicide attacks against them. How many Houthis were among those killed and wounded is unclear, but leaders call it a massacre, adding that many women and children were also wounded in the incident. So was the city's governor, according to reports, though he is expected to survive. So far, Al-Qaeda hasn't claimed credit for the attack, though it is widely expected that they will. FPP Radio News is brought to you by The Doublespeak Dictionary. The Doublespeak Dictionary by Leslie Star O'Hara satirizes the marked difference between the ideal of we the people and the reality of we the elite while offering an insightful glimpse into the clockworks of the totalitarian mind. Ever irreverent but never irrelevant, The Doublespeak Dictionary serves as a subversive and humorous but timely reminder that the emperor has no clothes. The Doublespeak Dictionary is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports a stampede killed at least 35 people during New Year's Eve celebrations in Shanghai. The Shanghai government said that large crowds started to stampede in Qin Yi Square on the Bund just before midnight, with authorities working to rescue and aid the wounded. The trigger for the stampede has yet to be confirmed, but state media and a witness said the incident was caused when people tried to pick up fake money thrown from a building. A man who brought one of the 43 injured to a local hospital for treatment said fake money had been thrown down from a bar above the street as part of the New Year's Eve celebrations. The man, who gave his family name as Wu, said people rushed to pick up the money, triggering the stampede. A woman who was on the boond described chaotic scenes, saying there were too many people and nowhere for people to escape. Dozens of distraught relatives gathered in the hospital lobby waiting for news, with some expressing frustration over a lack of information as police held them back. At dawn on Thursday, there were still small crowds of revelers trying to find taxis home, and workers were clearing up trash strewn around the boon. There was little sign of the mayhem that had broken out just hours earlier. In 2004, 37 people died in a stampede in northern Beijing on a bridge at a scenic spot during the Lunar New Year holiday. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley said Wednesday he will commute the sentences of the four men remaining on Maryland's death row before he leaves office. The state abolished the death penalty in 2013, but the legislature did not make the law retroactive. O'Malley said the state attorney general has advised him Maryland no longer has an execution protocol and is unable to put anyone to death. Before he announced his decision, he talked to the families of some of the victims of the four inmates. He said he believes commuting the sentence will spare the families the ordeal of more drawn-out appeals. O'Malley, who pushed for the 2013 law, leaves office in mid-January after serving two terms. Maryland has a history of capital punishment dating back to 1638 when two men were hanged for piracy. The state passed a new death penalty law after the U.S. Supreme Court found executions constitutional in 1976. The number of executions across the United States dropped this year, and prosecutors and juries appear to have been more willing to accept sentences of life without parole. The Death Penalty Information Center reports that six states abolished capital punishment 
punishment between 2007 and 2013, although none have done so since. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Hailing it as the industry's most innovative product to date, 